Chapter 1. Hi, wanted to try out writing for MHA, so here goes. I've not decided on a pairing for Izuku, so any suggestions? I like pretty much all pairings, apart from the homosexual ones. And Kakako, we don't do that here. Anyway, read on, and I hope whoever reads it likes it. Izuku Midoriya smiled and hugged his mother Inko, swinging his backpack over his shoulders. Don't worry, mom, I'll be fine, he reassured, giving her a hug. Just as he'd expected, the hereditary Midoriya waterworks started pouring from her eyes as she hung onto him. He himself had to make sure he didn't cry, shaking his head and blinking a little to clear his eyes. After all, between the two of them, they could probably flood the entire apartment block once they properly got going. They disengaged, and she gave him a smile that was wide, watery and proud. I'm just worried, my son, taking the UA exam. Izuku smiled. He hadn't told his mum about how strong he now was, she just thought he was going into this as the strong-willed but weak boy she'd known him to be his whole life. He wanted to surprise her when he hopefully got in, he'd tell her when that happened. I'll be fine, mom. Maybe I'll even surprise you. He reassured with a wide smile on his face, before turning and dashing out. He jogged down the stairs, and strolled onto the street, turning once to give his watching mother a wave before he turned the corner. But as soon as said corner was turned, his smile disappeared, his features morphing into an intimidating scowl. He slouched as he walked, and his gait gained a lot more swagger. He'd adopted this look to push everyone away after Bakugo had started turning his class in Aldera against him, but it had honestly become his normal character. He could revert to his old ways when around his mother, but around everyone else. Nah. He strolled to the train station, looking around at the familiar buildings of his neighborhood as he went, deep in thought. Half an hour later, Izuku Midoriya walked through the gates of UA. High school, he stopped just inside, the scowl lightening for just a second. Oh my gosh this is so cool so many new quirks to see I even brought my notebook I'm so nervous I wonder if we'll see present Mike or Snipe. Fuck off, Deku, Izuku sighed, get out of my fucking way, do you want to die, yelled the voice of one Katsuki Bakugo. Izuku didn't even bother responding. Wasn't worth it. Also, Bakugo hadn't seemed to realize, so he'd just try and slip away. Wait, Deku. Bakugo suddenly said in confusion. Damn it. Suddenly Bakugo was in front of him again. Why the fuck do you think you're here, eh? Izuku sighed again. I'm applying to UA, in case it wasn't obvious. The green-haired boy said dryly, looking away. You didn't tell me anything about that. What's up with that, huh? Shitty Deku, Bakugo said angrily in reply. His childhood friend simply walked away. You didn't need to know. Izuku threw over his shoulder, slouching into the hall they were meant to gather in. Bakugo stared after him in complete and utter shock. Huh, when did he get so fucking bold? We literally threw him in the creek last week. He thought. Then he rolled his eyes. Quote dot dot dot. TCH. As if he cared. Izuku walked in and sat down propping his legs up on the table in front of him and looking uninterested. His actions, however, were vastly contrasting with his thoughts. Please let it be present Mike, please let it be present Mike, please let it be. H-E-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y, present Mike, Izuku walked out, stretching. The assembly thing had gone all right, apart from some uptight blue-haired guy standing ramrod straight and accusing he and Bakugo of disrespecting UA by sitting so informally. Naturally, They'd ignored him. Probably the first time in years Izuku had felt any type of solidarity with the ashy blonde haired boy. The students had been told it would be a robot fight, and they'd be separated into groups to go to each battleground. Personally, Izuku couldn't be happier. He'd ace this easily. He ended up outside of the battleground he'd been assigned to, and stood at the back of the group, watching everyone. Suddenly, the boy from before latched onto his shoulder, a stern look on his face. People here are trying to take this seriously. I'm sure we'd all appreciate it if you did the same. With that, he turned and walked away to do some stretches. He's got some sort of speed quirk, I think, Izuku mused quietly. But I should think I'm still faster. I'll show him, looking down on me. Who does he think he is, Bakugo? Suddenly, they all heard present Mike's voice raining down from above. Izuku wasn't really listening. Something about the test had already started. What were they all waiting for? A. Didn't matter. He let everyone get ahead and split up, looking for robots to beat, and then started his own stretches. 
He saw Mr. Go by the rule book or die shoot off, with engines in his legs. Seems I was right in my assumption. Ten seconds later, he was ready to go. Hmm, how should I approach this fight? I know, I'll just run. Prove I'm better than that guy. The boy, still in his school uniform, got into a classic runner's starting position, and flexed his legs again. He grinned. This would be fun. He leaned forward, then broke into a full sprint, at about 500 meters per second to start off. Seems like nobody's destroyed any robots yet. I'll have to fix that, he thought with a snicker. Behind him, the ground where he'd started from cracked and exploded into bits from the pressure. Yuga Aoyama turned round to see a one-pointer headed his way. Finally, a chance from Wa. He thought, placing his hands behind his head as he fired up his naval laser. Only for the green robot to suddenly smash into pieces for no apparent reason, a sonic boom a couple of seconds later only confusing him more. Sparkle. Tenye Iida sprinted straight at a three-pointer, getting ready to try and land a solid kick on its optical sensors. Such a formidable piece of weaponry. As expected of UA, he yelled in his mind as he leapt towards the mechanical menace. But he ended up falling on a heap in the floor as his foot ended up whistling through empty air. He looked up in confusion to see a destroyed three-point robot in front of him, the only recognizable feature being the big metal plate with a three on it. The usually serious and in control Iida swung his head from left to right in complete confusion. What? Shihai Kuwaro raced through the shadows, hot on the tail of Konoko Komori, who bounced from mushroom to mushroom as she grew them. The two had made a temporary alliance, and were about to attack a group of three two-point robots. They'd almost reached their targets when something hit the ground in the middle of the group, causing all the mechs, and the two students, to go flying back, Komori and Kuwaro skidding on the ground while the robots were pulverized against the buildings. The two looked at each other in shock. What the mushroom? Komori started. Quote dot dot dot. Was that? Kuwaro finished bemusedly. This pattern happened without fail to every single person in that battleground, multiple times. And nobody had any clue who was doing it. Suddenly, a zero-pointer showed up out of nowhere, looming over a trapped Ochako Uraraka. Everyone on that side of the grounds turned to it, sterling their nerves to try and attack it. They needed to show the heroes watching that they could do something, after all. Unbeknownst to them, a similar situation was occurring at the other side of the grounds. Iida pushed up his glasses and fired his engines, but hesitated as he felt a rush of wind blow by him so fast that he could barely keep his footing. What now? Izuku Midoriya had one of the brightest smiles he'd ever had on his face. He felt so free whenever he went this fast. Free from Bakugo, free from pressure, free from all his worries, and most of all, free from whatever people expected of him because he was quirkless. He sprinted through the battleground, weaving through streets and jumping off walls. He smashed straight through any singular robots he found. If there were two, he smashed them together. And if there were three, he jumped and landed in the middle of them while punching the ground, sending them all flying. He knew the exam would be ending soon, but something was bothering him. Where are the zero pointers all at? As if they had been waiting for him to say that, suddenly there were two robots on each side of the grounds. He smirked. The green haired boy sprinted through the bunch of hero hopefuls that had been regrouping for an attack, smirking at Iida yes, he was going too fast for Iida to see, but it gave him satisfaction, okay, on the way, and then leapt up towards the massive robot's face. Lining his shot up perfectly, he spun midair and punched the robot's head clean off with a laugh. Over on the other side of the grounds, Mina Ashido lead the charge at the towering zero-pointer. But she stopped short when she saw a shadow heading towards them. Huh. Suddenly, the head of a different zero-pointer hurtled into their own zero-pointer's face, making it stagger backwards and fall to the ground, before the light in its red eyes died out. Huh. Mina said again, unable to comprehend what had just happened. No one got any points. The robots just broke before we could break them. What type of exam even was that? In an observatory room, Shota Aizawa, the hero known as Eraserhead, leaned back in his chair and whistled in surprise. Nezu, Midnight, All Might and Ectoplasm mirrored his surprise on their faces. That was, interesting, to say the least. Principal Nezu remarked, already tallying up Midoriya's score. All Might nodded pensively in agreement, staring at the screen. I remember this boy, he thought, but from where? Midnight turned to look behind her only to see Power Loader curled up in his massive helmet. Power Loader, everything okay, 
She asked. All of them. He destroyed all of them. The support teacher sobbed as he looked at her. I at least wanted the zero pointers back. He groaned, curling up again. We're going to have to redo the exam for the pupils in those grounds, but without that boy. Smintos said solemnly, and ectoplasm nodded agreement. The rest of them. Dot add their points all up and you still get zero. Just how powerful is that boy's quirk? He said. Nezu smiled. He's quirkless. And during the commotion between the teachers that erupted at that, the polar dog thing sat and sipped his tea pensively, thinking about the boy. He was now already expecting great things from the green-haired boy. After all, Izuku Midoriya was now the only person in history to score over 1,000 points in the UA entrance exam. Chapter 2 Feeling really inspired for this story right now, started this chapter like immediately after. So for ship suggestions, we got Ochako, Yunagi, Kodai, Mina and Suyu so far. I'm still not decided, but it's good to know what you guys want to see. Tenya Iida watched in shock as a figure fell from the sky after punching the head straight off a zero pointer. The brown haired girl who had been trapped under the rocks Iida realized that she had a quirk that floated things when he saw said rocks fall behind her rushed to where the person was going to land, to try and stop his fall probably. But suddenly the figure kicked off of the wreckage beside it, heading for a completely different spot. The boy zoomed through the air towards the ground, picking up speed as he went, until he finally landed with a loud smash and a cloud of dust and debris. Iida dusted the dirt from his glasses to try see into the dust cloud better. Who? And of course, he was utterly shocked when he recognized the boy he'd scolded twice earlier standing up and brushing himself off casually, frowning at his now ripped school uniform. He never even got changed. Iida thought, wait, the person destroying all the robots, that was him. He and all the other students stared in awe at the boy with curly green hair, who was now strolling through the group on his way back to the starting point. The boy ignored them all, apart from a single remark. Take a picture. It'll last longer, Izuku said with a snicker on his way past. He nodded sarcastically at Iida on his way past, but the blue-haired boy was simply too shocked to say a thing. As soon as he reached the starting point, he reached into his backpack, took out his change of clothes, got changed, and put his torn uniform back in, all at super speed. But to everyone behind him, now including the group that had gathered by the other zero pointer that had caught up, it looked like the greenette's clothes simply flashed and changed form. They all thought the same thing in unison. What the hell is this guy's quirk? Izuku walked to the front gates, where he found Bakugo and his cronies waiting for him. Bakugo wants to be the only one from our school to go to UA, so they were probably just waiting out here the whole time, Izuku thought. Then he suddenly smirked, not as if they're smart enough to get accepted here, even if they wanted to. Boy, Deku, Bakugo shouted, how'd it go? Did you show everyone what a quirkless loser you are? The explosive teen taunted. But he didn't even get a reaction out of the boy. In fact, all that did was make everyone else nearby that had been in the same battleground as Izuku snap their heads up in shock and confusion. Q quirkless, Izuku made it home a while later, slouching up the stairs and opening the door. Immediately, his mom's voice rang out from the kitchen. Izuku, you're back, how did it go? She rambled without turning around. I'm making Katsudan, your favorite. Want to help? Immediately, the smile from that morning was shining on his face. Of course, he smiled, reciprocating the hug she bustled over and gave him with a chuckle. Dot dot dot, yeah, Izuku's mom was great, and didn't he know it? A few days later, Izuku was chilling at Dagoba Municipal Beach, lying in the sun in his swimming shorts. This was one of his favorite places to come and think, given that he'd been the one to single-handedly clean it up. Closing his eyes, he thought quietly about what he was going to do if he got in. Being so closed off from everyone did mean that yes, they left him alone, so no bullying. But it also meant he had no friends whatsoever. He could still vividly remember the last day he'd called anyone his friend. Over four years ago, ironically, that day had been the day he turned his life around. Boy, Deku, Bakugo called, smirking. He had his usual two thugs behind him. For as long as he'd known them, Bakugo had called them, Red Wing, and, Long Fingers. Izuku had tried to find out their real names, but they'd ignored him. Quote dot dot dot, yeah, Kachan, Izuku smiled genuinely, no matter how the ashy blonde treated him, he'd always stay friends with him. What's hanging, quirkless loser? Oh wait, you should be. 
You and the rest of your kind. Okay, maybe Izuku wouldn't always stay friends with him. That was way too far. The three walked away, Red Wing and Long Fingers complimenting Bakugo for being so funny. Izuku was left standing in the park, looking dejectedly after the person he called a friend. Kachan, wow, look at him. Oh my gosh, those muscles. Izuku was pulled out of his thoughts by a group of girls his age in swimsuits sitting down rather close to him, all of them with their eyes glued to his abs, chest and arms. He squinted one of his eyes open, and immediately shut it again, fighting down the blush that was threatening to invade his face at the sight of so many giggling girls in revealing bikinis. Now that he thought about it, it had been two girls dressed very similarly to them that gave him the idea to clean up the beach in the first place. Izuku was walking home sadly. It was better for his general health now that he wasn't following Kachan about, but he now felt kinda lonely. After all, half his daily routine had consisted of getting bullied. What was he supposed to do with his free time now? As he passed two girls in swimsuits, his face erupted in red and he couldn't help but listen to what they were saying. Wanted to go to that beach, but it's so cluttered. One was saying. I know, right, her friend replied. The online map didn't say it would be a complete dumping ground. As Izuku walked away, he continued to think about that. An idea was pricking at the back of his mind, but he couldn't grasp it. Then suddenly, he did. He wanted to get stronger, much stronger. He suddenly had a load of free time on his hands. And the beach was cluttered up to the point that nobody could use it. So he'd use his spare time to clear up the beach barehanded, getting stronger in the process. He'd show Bakugo. Quirkless didn't mean powerless. He'd make the name, Deku, into one that everyone looked up to, saw as powerful. He should put in a training schedule as well. He started writing in his notebook, trying to think of a good plan. Then he remembered a joke workout he saw online, and decided to try it. I'll do a hundred push-ups a day. I'll do a hundred sit-ups a day. I'll do a hundred squats a day. I'll go for a ten-kilometer run every day. And I'll always keep the AC off no matter how hot it gets, to train my mind. Yeah, that'd work, although the AC thing might drive my mom crazy. Now to get started. Hey, hot guy, one of the girl's voices addressing him from in front of him yanked him out of his reverie again. Izuku looked up at her, doing his utmost to focus on her face and not let his eyes wander downwards. There are only five of us, but we want to play beach volleyball. Want to join us, the admittedly pretty girl asked him, unashamedly staring at his muscles. Izuku was stuck between being happy that he was getting checked and annoyed that he was being bothered. Well, at least none of them recognized him from school. Wait, I know you, damn it, you're that guy from the entrance exam. Well, at least it's not someone from school. Who are you? Izuku asked curtly to the girl who had spoken. She had pink skin, and pink hair shaped much like his. Mina Ashido, she said, but unlike her bubbly voice from earlier, she was now glaring at him. Come to think of it, they all were glaring at him now. What did I do? He asked wearily. One of the girls looked at him angrily. Mina told us what you did. You're telling me you really don't know. Izuku looked at Ashido. Huh, what did I do? Have I even met you before? He scowled. You destroyed all the robots before we could get a chance to. The pink-skinned girl complained. Thanks to you. Me and everyone else in that battleground had to redo the test the next day. Yeah, one of her friends reiterated. We couldn't go get our nails done, cause Mina had to redo the stupid test. Oh, Izuku said, lying back down and closing his eyes again. If they've already decided they want to be annoyed at me, who am I to try change their minds? Well, you snooze, you lose. He relaxed again, letting the sun's rays soothe him. He could tell they were still glaring at him but he knew they would go away soon. Sure enough, they left a few minutes later after it was clear he wasn't going to respond. Mina did throw him a curious look as they walked away, though. Izuku was left with one thought. I've not even been accepted into UA, and my potential classmates already hate me. I swear I'm cursed or something. Later that day, he strolled home, glaring at anyone who looked at him. While crossing a bridge, he passed a couple of girls from his class in Aldera Middle School, who started looking at him and snickering. Izuku smirked, and faster than their eyes could follow, he jumped over the side of the small bridge, punched the water, and ran to the other end. He then looked back to see a massive splash envelop them, leaving them completely soaked. They glared at him maliciously. 
How did you do that, loser? Izuku just shrugged with an innocent smile. Couldn't have been me. I'm quirkless, remember? The girls huffed and ran home, leaving Izuku to chuckle and walk away. Mission accomplished. He would show the world that quirkless people could beat them all. A month later, Izuku received a letter from UA. He picked it up and smiled. Hopefully he had been accepted. He knew he'd done well, but he couldn't help but be nervous. Is that, yeah, Izuku answered his mother, who looked anxiously at the letter in his hand. But then she smiled. Izuku, do you believe you got in? She asked, putting a comforting hand on his shoulder to calm him. Her son nodded hesitantly. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I mean, there's the chance they didn't accept me, but... Izuku, his mom interrupted firmly. You believe you got in. And I believe in you. The green-haired boy nodded a few times, then smiled gratefully. Quote dot dot dot. Thanks, mom. Izuku pulled his mother over to the couch, and the two sat down at the living room table, Izuku taking a deep breath and opening the envelope. A disc fell out, and a hologram appeared from it. Both mother and son found their jaws falling open at the figure hailing them from it. All Might, young Midoriya, the projection of All Might shouted, holding a thumb up. You may be surprised to see me, but I am going to be teaching at UA. Next summer, and I am here, to tell you that you have indeed been accepted. At this, Inko Midoriya enveloped her son in a tearful hug, and Izuku hugged her right back. T thanks for believing in me, mom, Izuku said happily. But he couldn't help but throw one last glare at the hovering projection of All Might, who was now talking about him getting so many points that they'd address it in school. No way do I want him as a teacher. Chapter 3, A N at the bottom, replies to some comments as well. Izuku Midoriya walked through the gates of UA once again. I can't believe I actually got in, was the most prevalent thought going through his head as he strolled through the corridors, but as usual his outward appearance showed no evidence of that. Instead, he was giving off a serious, even if you approach me, I won't reply, vibe. He stopped in front of a massive door for class 1A. But before he could go in, he was hailed by a quiet voice. Midoriya, this way, and when he turned around, he was met with the sight of. Oh my gosh it's Eraserhead is he my homeroom teacher this is crazy I wonder why he's in a sleeping bag but what does he want me for I hope I'm not in trouble already and I should probably answer him already, shouldn't I? Hey, sensei, let on, I'm right behind you, Izuku said calmly, following slowly behind the sleeping bag clad Eraser hero. He was led into a room where Principal Nezu and Recovery Girl were sitting waiting for him. Dot dot dot, shit, I'm in trouble, aren't I? Well, Midoriya, you're not in trouble if that's what you're thinking. Nezu smiled reassuringly. Izuku realized he'd just been standing at the doorway while they all stared at him, so he stepped in. He was still far from reassured, though. Why am I here then, sensei? He asked. Well, your papers say you're quirkless, Midoriya. Aizawa explained. Izuku suddenly scowled. So they think that I couldn't do that just because I'm quirkless. All I did was run faster than the speed of sound and jump higher than the average tower. Actually never mind, it does sound pretty unreasonable. So, if you don't mind, we want to make sure this is true, dear. Recovery girl said kindly, and Izuku nodded. He turned to Aizawa, guessing how they were going to test it, and Nezu nodded in approval. Smart boy, well done. Eraser head, if you would. Sighing tiredly, Aizawa stared at Izuku, his eyes suddenly glowing red and his hair floating up. After a few seconds, he stopped and nodded at Nezu. I couldn't feel any effect. He is quirkless. He turned to Izuku. Well done for being honest and not pretending you have a quirk, Midoriya. I know it probably caused you a good bit of trouble. It won't be the same here, I promise. He reassured as he took some eye drops. Well, would you look at that. Eraserhead's actually a pretty good guy. Most people pretend that I've had a perfectly normal life. Also, how unfortunate could you possibly be to have a seeing-related quirk but get dry eye? Well, thank you, Midoriya. If you could head back to class now. Nezu asked, after congratulating the boy on his score and explaining it. Apparently he had destroyed the last record, which had been set by All Might himself. Midoriya nodded curling his lip distastefully at the mention of the number one hero, but smirking when told he beat him and left. As soon as the sound of the boy's footsteps receding down the hall disappeared, Nezu turned to the two teachers and smiled. I'd like you two to keep an eye on him, please. I'll talk to All Might as well, 
Maybe Midoriya could be a good successor. He looks promising, he said, sipping some tea. The two heroes nodded, of course. And so, Midoriya was once again standing outside the massive door to Class 1A. He looked up and down the corridor, and seeing no one, took the chance to take a deep breath and steal himself. Hopefully I won't be in the same class as Mr. Go by the rulebook or die, or Bakugo. He pushed the door open and slouched in, only to see one of the aforementioned scolding the other loudly. Dot dot dot, shit. Then, upon seeing him, the uptight boy sped over to him, sticking his hand out. Hello, I'm Iida Tenya from Sume. Junior high school, yeah yeah, I heard when you yelled it at Bakugo. Izuku muttered in a bored tone, ignoring Iida's outstretched hand. Pretending not to notice the rudeness, Iida continued. You outperformed all of us in the entrance exam by far, with such a powerful quirk at your disposal. Do you mind telling me how many points you ended up getting? Behind him, Bakugo suddenly straightened. Quirk. 600 villain points, and 800 rescue points. Izuku muttered, looking for a seat. At this, everyone straightened and tuned into the conversation in shock. What? How? There was a hundred of each robot, apart from the zero pointers. A guy with a tail said. You took out every single one. Fair enough. But what's this about rescue points? Mina asked suspiciously. You didn't rescue anyone, you just destroyed all the robots. Technically, I saved anyone fighting each robot when I destroyed it. Izuku muttered. Bakugo jumped over his desk and swaggered till he was right in front of his old childhood friend, glaring at him. Deku, what's this about a fucking quirk, huh? He yelled, explosions crackling dangerously in his palm. Izuku rolled his eyes. Bakugo, you'll be happy to know that I still don't have a quirk. Everyone stared at him in shock, apart from those who had heard at the entrance exam. Then he muttered an aside. Like I need one to beat your ass anyway. The fuck did you? If you're here to socialize, do it elsewhere. Aizawa's voice rang out from the doorway. While everyone looked at the talking yellow sleeping bag in shocked confusion, Izuku took the chance to grab a seat. Unfortunately, the only remaining one was on the left of Ashido Mina, who had been glaring at him since the moment he'd come in. He smirked at her, and she glared even harder. On his right was a purple-haired girl with earphone jacks protruding from her earlobes. Behind him was the brown-haired girl he'd saved at the exam, and in front of him was a cool-looking guy with a mask and six arms. Aizawa gave them all PE uniforms and told them to get to the grounds. In no time at all they'd done so, and were standing helplessly as the teacher threw away all pretense of easing them into the school and hit them with a quirk apprehension test, with the threat of expulsion to whoever came last. Bakugo. What was your best softball throw in middle school, where they didn't let you use your quirk? 67 meters, the explosive teen replied, grinning as he guessed where this was going. Aizawa smiled, then told him to try it using his quirk. Bakugo did so, and got an impressive 705.2 meters, yelling, die. Everyone looked shocked, die, Izuku just rolled his eyes. Everyone, use your quirks in these tests. Midoriya, you do you. Aizawa said quietly, the other students glanced at the green-haired boy at the reminder of his quirk situation. Those who hadn't seen him in action weren't really expecting much. The first trial was the 50-meter dash. Iida set the precedent, doing it in an impressive 3.04 seconds with his leg engines. He looked around proudly, and Izuku smiled. I'll beat that, don't worry. But nothing personal, you might not be that bad a guy after all. Soon, it was Izuku's turn, against none other than his old tormentor. I'll use my absolute top speed for this one, both boys thought, glaring at each other. Then Izuku turned to the purple-haired girl he'd seen earlier. No point in antagonizing even more people, right? He thought as he realized something. Hey, earphone girl, he called. You've got a hearing quirk, right? Might want to cover your ears for my tests. He had guessed her hearing was sensitive, and knowing how easily he broke the sound barrier, he didn't want to make another enemy by giving her constant earache with the sonic booms. They lined up, and blasted off, quite literally in Bakugo's case. But nothing could have prepared anyone for the speed of Izuku Midoriya. As soon as the dash started, he was standing casually at the other side of the track. Seconds later, a sonic boom hit them, and Kyoka Jiro smiled gratefully at him for warning her. With her hearing, a sonic boom that close would feel like a sledgehammer to her ears. They all looked at Aizawa, who was staring at the thing in his hand in shock. 
he then showed it to them, shaking his head in wonder. 0.000005 seconds. They all looked at the greenette, dumbfounded, so he decided to mess with them. He smirked, muttering to himself. Shit, could have been faster. They all stared, in even more shock. Next was the grip strength test. Shoji, the guy with six arms, got an impressive 540 kilograms by using three of his hands. Izuku somehow completely shattered the equipment. After that, the standing long jump. Everyone was praising Bakugo and Aoyama for just going as far as they could with one blast. Izuku jumped home and back for the fun of it. Also to say hi to his mom, who made him a bento box in the blink of an eye. Needless to say, his classmates were rather confused when he came back with some delicious smelling food. Bakugo recognized the heavenly smell of Auntie Inko's cooking, but how in the name of fucking shit could that be possible? Another one was the sustained sideways jumps. Mineta excelled by simply bouncing at extreme speeds between his great balls. Izuku matched his pace, then went far beyond even that, smirking the whole while. Finally, it was time for the last test. The pitch, which Bakugo had already attempted. Uraraka did the best in this one, the meter simply showing an infinity sign. But then Izuku stepped up, and the class subconsciously all leaned forward, wanting to see how much craziness he could pull off this time. He stepped up and threw the ball, which immediately broke the sound barrier and shot into the sky. At Musudafu Astronomics Center, the lead engineer watched in bemusement as a small missile launched from the UA grounds. It shot straight up into space, breaking comets and asteroids in its way without even slowing down. He stood up abruptly, throwing his headset away. He remembered the seemingly crazy principal of the school, Nezu, having met him at some social meet. What is that bear dog thing doing, experimenting with nukes as part of the security system or something? Aizawa showed them the symbol now on his monitor. An infinity sign with a plus sign next to it. Infinity plus, how is that even possible? And apparently Bakugo had had enough. Explain this, U-S-H-I-T-R-A-G. He yelled, shooting towards Izuku. Izuku set himself ready to defend, but suddenly, Bakugo's quirk stopped working. He flailed in the air, and was suddenly restrained by Aizawa's capture tape. Izuku waved him goodbye as he was yanked away by the tape, Aizawa already giving him an earful. Izuku smiled, only a day in, and he already liked Aizawa-sensei way better than he had his middle school teacher. Soon it was time for the results. And by the way, Aizawa smirked, the whole, expulsion, thing was just a logical deception. What? Come on guys, use your brains. Of course it was, a posh looking girl with a ponytail said, flipping her hair. Izuku raised an eyebrow, true, but you don't have to be so condescending about it. Wait. Am I really judging someone for acting better than everyone else? The green-haired boy looked around at everyone, judging reactions. Mineta and the earphone girl looked most relieved, as well as the shaking clothes of the invisible girl. Aizawa handed them the results, and they all perused them with interest. Izuku smirked at his name in first place, but took the time to find out everyone's names, roughly based on performance. I came first ahead of Momo Yaoyorozu, probably the ponytail girl. She creates stuff. Next was Shoto Todoroki he was the fire and ice guy. Wait, wasn't Endeavor's name Todoroki? Ah oh well, never mind. He'd ask the boy some other time. I know Bakugo obviously, although I wish I didn't. I know Iida too. Next are Tokiami and Shoji. Shoji's the cool guy with the mask and arms. So I guess Tokiami is the bird guy with the living shadow. After that, everyone's results kinda blur together, so I won't be able to figure out much more. I think Kirishima was the guy that gets hard all the time. Pause. Makes his skin hard all the time. Yeah, better. Ojiro, no clue. Kaminari, the electricity guy maybe. That'd make Ojiro the tail guy, we'll go with that. I'm guessing Hagakuri is Miss Hide and Seek Queen, which would leave Jiro as earphones, since I already know Uraraka. He turned around to leave, but suddenly realized that the teacher had already left. Aizawa Sensei is gone, that means... Izuku suddenly threw up his right arm to block, just in time. Katsuki Bakugo's right hook crashed into it less than a second later. All the rest of the students gasped in surprise. He didn't even look. How did he know Bakugo was coming? Deku, how the fuck are you doing this? Shut it, Kachan, Izuku said quietly. The use of the old nickname was enough to throw Bakugo off mentally for long enough for Izuku to walk calmly out. 
The rest of his classmates stared after him. He is way too overpowered, they were all thinking. At the end of the day, they all filed out of the class, information spilling out of their ears. Once they had gotten back, Aizawa had lectured them on everything they would need to know about UA, and some of the students' heads were steaming. Bakugo swaggered on ahead, and the rest of the class looked at Izuku, wondering whether he was going to go after the boy. They had seemed to already know each other, after all. Uraraka decided to ask him. Hey, Deku, and suddenly Izuku's eyes widened. Oh no oh fuck it's happening again. Not even a day in and he's got them calling me, Deku. I should have known, I. Uh, are you alright? That's like, the biggest reaction anyone's gotten out of you all day. The earphone girl said, pulling Izuku out of his thoughts. Shit, lost my composure there. It doesn't matter, I'll just have to keep them all away. I'm gonna need to build some resistance to others calling me that if I want it to be my hero name. My name is Midoriya, Izuku said curtly, walking on ahead as well. The rest of them all shared a look. What the hell is going on with those two? Kirishima asked quietly. No clue, Mina answered, but if he doesn't like the name Deku, that's what I'm gonna call him. The next day, they sat through hours of boring English lessons with present Mike, then sat down for some delicious food courtesy of lunch rush well. In Izuku's case, his mom's cooking was just as good. Izuku sat down and opened his bento box, his mouth already watering. He could see lunch rush's head snap up, probably sensing some good competition from all the way across the dining hall. Now Izuku didn't have any friends, nor was he expecting to make any. So he wasn't expecting anyone to join him. He could see Iida and Uraraka looking at him, before shaking their heads and deciding to sit somewhere else. So it was much to his surprise when a tray was laid down opposite from him. He looked up to see Mezo Shoji standing there. Mind if I sit here? Quote dot dot dot. No, Izuku said, shrugging. Weird, although he has seemed like a pretty chill guy. Doesn't talk much. And then he was even more surprised when Fumikage Tokiami asked to join them as well. The three spent the whole of lunch eating silently and observing everyone else. But when it was over, they walked to class together, and when they sat down, Shoji turned around and talked with him, answering a couple of questions that Izuku had about his quirk. And so that was how Izuku Midoriya was left with one thought that left him completely shell-shocked. I, have friends, the class waited for their next teacher, talking animatedly. Suddenly, there he was. And that's what he told them. I am here, coming through the door like a normal person. He smiled at the children who were looking ecstatic to see him, his eyes looking them over good-naturedly. But then he made eye contact with Izuku Midoriya, and immediately remembered why he had vaguely recognized the boy during the entrance exam. All Might, do you think someone quirkless like me can become a hero? All Might had rejected his dream, something that would have crushed Izuku if he hadn't known he was strong enough anyway. But that wasn't even the only thing he was angry at All Might for. When Bakugo had been taken by that sludge monster, Izuku was there. He'd been about to take out the villain when it first appeared, but All Might had interrupted. Now, he looked around, and recognized All Might in his skinny form. And he was just standing there. Doing nothing. Why aren't you doing anything? Izuku murmured softly. You would still be able to use your quirk in that form. And that's when it hit him. Izuku realized that All Might wouldn't save Bakugo unless he was in his buff form. Not couldn't, but wouldn't. The hero Izuku had looked up to all of his life cared more about his damn image as the symbol of peace than about saving people. Izuku dashed in, incapacitated the monster with one punch, and dashed out, all at super speed. He timed it to be just as Bakugo released a large explosion, so nobody would suspect. To everyone else, it looked like Bakugo finally exploded his way out, injuring the monster enough for the heroes to take it out. But all might knew different. He looked around for a possible source, then saw him. The kid he'd just rejected, glaring at him and then walking away. With a piece of sludge on his shoulder. The number one hero sighed. He'd messed up, and he knew it. But even if he went after him, the boy would probably hate him now. So All Might turned and walked away. That was the day Izuku swore he would become the number one hero. Holy shit, 100 story alerts after two chapters. Either you guys are crazy, or I've ascended to some higher plane of writing I had no clue existed. So, you guys have probably noticed that I switched the seating up a little bit. It's just for convenience. Izuku will be ending up with one of the three, 
most probably Jiro. My favorite Izuku ships are Izujiro, Izumina, Izwocha and Izume. Although I can't say no to Momo, or Suyu, or Kendo, or... Actually, everyone but Toga, probably. So don't worry if you don't see your favorite ship in this story, I'm planning on doing at least one story for every ship. How do you guys like the Deku Squad for this one? Tried to make it original, and also Shoji and Tokiami are two of my favorite side characters. Todoroki will probably join after the sports festival, and maybe Jiro and Suyu. Omnipotent X. Mina isn't really that angry at him, she just gets off on the wrong foot with him and his attitude makes it a little worse every time they interact. Borad King. I know Izuku seems a bit spiteful in this story, but I'm just trying to show that he's a bit prejudiced against people with quirks due to his experiences in middle school and with all might. And I'm going to stick with Deku, because I think I put it in somewhere in chap 2 that Izuku wants to turn that name into one that people will feel hope when they hear. Sorry if it's a misunderstanding and I forgot that bit. 877 Chapter 4 Well, shit, I was looking through comments, and I saw a reference to One Punch Deku by NP Gamer 11. I read the first couple chapters of it, and realized that my story is basically an approximate copy of theirs. So I've been left feeling like a dumbass, and I've decided that I'll read the rest of that story, and if it lines up too much with my own plans, I'll abandon this story or delete it. All Might shook himself out of the memory, his signature smile Detroit smashing its way onto his face again. I shall be teaching you all foundational hero studies. He grinned, and we'll start with this. The trial of battle. The class murmured in surprise, almost all of them throwing Izuku a scared look. None of them wanted to battle him, well apart from Bakugo. But that guy was crazy, they all knew that. And to go with your first battle, all might explain to them, we've prepared the gear you all requested. He said with a flourish, pointing to suitcases that came out of the wall. Izuku picked up his, a small smile flashing onto his face as he thought of his mom. Izuku, Inko Midoriya asked hesitantly. The green-haired boy had just finished telling her about how strong he now was, and she was still processing the information. Yeah, mom, well, you see, Izuku's mother hesitated. The boy gave her a smile, and she continued on. Well, I wanted to make a costume for you, but judging by how powerful you are now, it would probably rip immediately. So, could I help you design yours? Izuku gave her a brilliant smile. Of course, mom, anything you'd like to see, I'll add it. And here Izuku was, strolling out of the corridor in his new suit. For the suit, imagine the front cover of this story, but with his red high tops. I'll never change this design, he thought. After all, my mum helped with it. It's like having a bit of her with me. Everyone turned and looked at him, some of them in plain fear. He walked upright, his cape flowing out behind him, with his usual sardonic smirk on his face. All Might went on to explain the task and its rules, then separated them all into groups. Group A, Midoriya and Jiro. Group B, Shoji and Todoroki. Group C, Mineta and Yaoyorozu. Group D, Ashido and Bakugo. Group E, Aoyama and Iida. Group F, Koda and Sato. Group G, Uraraka and Kaminari. Group H, Asui and Tokiami. Group 1, Ojiro and Hagakuri. Group J, Siro and Kirishima. First up was Group A against Group D, with Midoriya's team as the villains. He and Jiro took their place inside the building, and while their opponents were still on their way to the building, Jiro took the opportunity to talk to the green-haired boy. Um, Midoriya, she asked quietly, Yeah, what's up? Izuku replied neutrally, unsure of what she wanted. I know you don't like talking to others and stuff, but I wanted to say thanks. For warning me during the test yesterday. The rocker girl said, looking at him. Midoriya just shrugged. It was nothing, just didn't want to make any more enemies. He replied shortly, turning away again. But Jiro pressed on. If you don't mind, why do you keep pushing everyone away? You ignore basically everyone except Shoji and Tokiami, and even then, you don't talk much. She said curiously. Quote dot dot dot, I just don't like other people, okay. I'd rather stay alone, now let's think up a strategy. Izuku replied curtly after a bit of hesitation. But as they came up with a plan to defend their nuclear weapon, Jiro couldn't help but think about something she'd picked up on due to her super sensitive hearing. His heartbeat was all kinds of messed up when he said that. Midoriya, why are you lying? Bakugo and Mina reached the building, 
and the explosive teen suddenly grew a feral grin. I'll fuck you up this time for sure, Deku. Beside him, the bundle of color that was Mina in her hero costume spoke happily. So what's the plan, Bakugo? Stay the fuck out of my way, go for whatever the shitty objective was. I got Deku. Mina nodded, and the two rushed inside. They were a lot more cautious after that, but... Why was nothing happening? Jiro, her earphone jacks plugged into the ground, looked over at Izuku who was sitting looking peaceful with his back against the rocket. They're in. Both of them are heading towards the stairs now. She said tensely. K. Remember the plan, Izuku reminded her unconcernedly. You capture Mina, I'll mess with Bakugo. Then capture him at some point. Jiro nodded, still not sure why Midoriya was so set on antagonizing the explosion quirk user. Just then, the opponents they had been waiting for blasted through the door, Mina partially melting it and Bakugo blasting the rest apart. Kyoka flinched, but Izuku just smirked, staying seated on the ground like he didn't have a care in the world. Mina and Jiro immediately engaged in battle, the rocker girl plugging her jacks into her boots and firing blast after blast at the pink-skinned girl, who dodged them all with some flashy dance moves. Mina hid behind a pillar, with Jiro waiting tensely to see what direction the girl would go in. She saw some acid suddenly go out to the left, and fired there, but it was just a feint. Mina dashed out from the left while she was distracted, and got close enough to engage Jiro in hand-to-hand. -hand. They continued their light sparring for about half a minute, before suddenly Jiro slipped. She looked down in confusion, which soon turned to horror. Mina had been letting acid seep out from the soles of her feet the whole time, slowly melting through the floor. Just as Jiro realized this, the acid quirk user kicked the ground, sending Jiro tumbling. The rocker girl managed to latch on to the edge, but Mina just looped the capture tape around her wrist. Sorry. It's all right. Kyoka grumbled, letting herself down gently. Midoriya, I'd tell you to watch out, but you've got this in the bag anyway. You didn't need my help in the first place, that's for sure. Meanwhile, Bakugo and Izuku had engaged in a stare-down. It continued for a while, the sounds of the two girls fighting turning into nothing but background noise. Suddenly, Bakugo leapt at Izuku, but found himself back in the same place he started. He looked down in confusion. The fuck? He tried again, but yet again he just ended up in the same spot. He was really starting to get pissed off now. Witness the true power of my stand, Zawarudo. Izuku muttered quietly with a smirk. Bakugo spat at him, which Izuku neatly dodged. TCH, of course a nerd like you would watch anime. Izuku decided to go even further. Hinjuku, Hinjuku, he snickered. Zawarudo, Toki wo tamare. And suddenly, Bakugo was wrapped up like a mummy in the capture tape, hanging from the ceiling and spinning faster than a tornado. Izuku snickered, he'd always wanted to do that. He turned around to look at Jiro's fight, only to see Mina glaring at him. He sighed. Okay, let's get this over with. He said as she dashed towards the rocket. Suddenly, he was in front of her, and some capture tape was around her wrist. She fell back onto the floor in shock, Izuku looking down at her. Then he looked away. For what it's worth, you fought well. He said, putting his hand out and rolling his eyes where she couldn't see. She grudgingly accepted the help to stand up, and walked over to her partner. A second later, Izuku was now with everyone else. He stood slightly apart from the rest, on his own, but Jiro, already having made it there, came and stood next to him. He looked at her sharply, but internally confused. Was there something you wanted? Can't I chill beside a friend? She asked sardonically, and Izuku raised an eyebrow. I wasn't aware we were. Jiro jacked him in the side, making him double over. We're friends now, Midoriya, whether you like it or not. Now, tell me what you think of the next match. Izuku sighed, couldn't he get out of this? Well, no, because they were meant to stay in this room and she'd probably just follow him if he got up. Shit. He looked up at the screen. Shoji and Todoroki, he said wearily, in less than half a minute. Sure enough, the two made quick work of Ojiro and Hagakuri, Shoji scouting their location out and Todoroki freezing half the building. Jiro looked at Izuku in surprise. He guessed exactly right. How did he do that? What are you hiding, Midoriya? The next day, Izuku was ambushed. But not by villains. What do you think of All Might as a teacher? Oh, fuck off, Izuku muttered. I'm trying to get to class. Why are you turning that into an interrogation? With that, he simply ran into the grounds, 
blasting the reporters all back a little. Rude, they all commented. Aizawa told them they were to pick a class president that day. Iida immediately advised them to put it to a vote, and Izuku nodded. That would be the fairest way to do it. Hey, Iida would actually make a pretty good class rep, I'll vote for him. Iida ended up getting less votes than Izuku himself. Over half the class voted for him, and for the life of him he couldn't figure out why. Eventually he just asked Jiro, who was sitting at her desk beside him. Isn't it obvious? She said in surprise. You're the most powerful out of all of us by far. Why would anyone else represent? Izuku shook his head. Can't everyone just leave me alone? I don't want the role. He muttered. Only Jiro heard him, but all she could do was put it in her. Strange things I do not understand about Midoriya, brain compartment. Izuku stood up. I give my position to Iida. He announced. Iida thanked him respectfully, then proceeded to make the whole class march in double file out of the room to the lunch hall. They ended up missing an entire catastrophe with the alarm going off, just due to Iida's strictness. Izuku rolled his eyes. I don't even have a clue whether that vindicates my choice or not. 877 Chapter 5 Good news. I've been convinced to continue. Bad news. Nah, there's no bad news. I'm reading the manga for the first time, so I'm just writing each event after I read it. Really enjoying it so far, but my story's gonna turn out quite a bit different. A man made out of purple mist stood in a suit at the bar, cleaning wine glasses. He looked over at the thing by the table, a massive hulking beast with a beak and an exposed brain. A nomu, it was called. Suddenly, he was pulled out of his thoughts. Hey, what do you think would happen? A scratchy voice muttered. Once the symbol of peace got snuffed out by villains. For the foundational hero skills you'll be learning today, Aizawa explained, it has been decided that you'll be supervised by three teachers, All Might, me and one other teacher who you'll meet when we get there. Sensei, what will we be doing? Yelled out a guy a few seats away from Izuku, one whose name the green-haired boy hadn't bothered to learn yet. He knew the boy's quirk though, the guy could shoot tape out of his cylindrical elbow joints. You're going to learn to be the heroes that anyone needs, no matter what disaster takes place. It's the trial of rescue, Aizawa said, holding up a card with the word, rescue, on it. Everyone started chattering excitedly, but were soon quieted by Aizawa sharply cutting in. Once they were calm again, he continued. As I was about to say, you can all choose whether to wear your costumes or not. Some of your costumes may not be good for this task, so be careful. The training area is a sizable distance away, so we'll be taking a bus there. Anyway, that's all. Go get prepared, Aizawa told them, and they all immediately rushed to get their suits and a snack or two. As usual, Izuku sprinted all the way home to pick up a bento box from his mom and give her the customary hug and update on what was going on. Soon they were getting on the bus. Iida made them all line up and get on the bus in an orderly fashion according to their numbers, but it ended up being a bus where they were all facing each other anyway. The whole class widened their eyes. Is he gonna be this way every time we go somewhere? They all started making small talk, with the conversation turning to how Kirishima didn't think his quirk was that great. Izuku rolled his eyes. At least be grateful you have won. Then Kaminari spoke up. If we're talking powerful and flashy, you can't not mention Bakugo, Todoroki and Midoriya. Asui, in her usual blunt manner, decided to comment. Midoriya and Bakugo won't be popular heroes, though. Midoriya pushes everyone away or ignores them rudely, and Bakugo's always fuming. At this, Izuku looked away, ignoring them all as they looked at him, and Bakugo started yelling furiously, with a healthy dose of swear words. See, as they all started making fun of Bakugo since he'd responded to the teasing, Izuku looked at his feet with a frown. As amusing as it is to see Bakugo getting made fun of, that's made me think, he thought solemnly. I built up this personality to overcome my past challenges, but will it now become its own challenge on my way to being a great hero? Just then, they arrived at their destination. They walked into the unforeseen simulation joint, marveling at its size and detail. And suddenly, Pro Hero 13 was in front of them, explaining things while Izuku internally freaked out. Where's All Might? Wasn't he supposed to be here? Aizawa asked, looking at 13. It looks as though he was out heroing during his morning commute until his time was up. 13 said, holding up three fingers. Nobody but Aizawa understood the gesture. Oh, and Izuku as well. Three fingers, three hours, 
Probably, Izuku thought as he remembered his conversation with the skinny All Might. Ah oh well, I'm not going to miss him. Then, Thirteen launched into an explanation about his quirk, Black Hole. It was useful in rescue situations, yes, he told them, but it also had the potential to be fatally deadly. And they should treat all of their quirks as such, knowing how to hold back. Izuku thought he was exempt from this lecture, due to not having a quirk, and looked away. Aizawa was quick to chastise him, albeit not very harshly. Midoriya, you should listen to this too. Even without a quirk, you are the most powerful student here. Bakugo huffed at that, making everyone snicker until they realized that Midoriya had ignored the teacher, instead squinting off somewhere else. Suddenly, he disappeared, then reappeared a second later, this time holding someone by the scruff of the neck. Who's this? They all looked at the green-haired teen in shock, then the looks turned into a kind of horrified curious as they looked at the guy on the ground. He seriously looked like he needed some moisturizer on his face, and he was wearing detached human hands all over his upper body and head. Damn it, the guy mumbled. The game glitched. Suddenly, he lunged forward with his hand straight out, at the first student he saw. Mina Ishido. He was deceptively fast, and Aizawa knew he wouldn't be able to erase the guy's quirk in time, whatever it was. But Izuku was faster. In a flash of green, red and white, the teen was suddenly there, knocking the man's hand away from his classmate. Instead of Mina's face, the enemy's hand latched onto a metal railing. Said railing rusted and decayed into nothing in seconds, making everyone's eyes widen in fear, especially Mina. Izuku didn't react, however, immediately just taking his chance and punching him in the stomach. The guy flew back, and then a swirling purple hole appeared behind him, which he hurtled through. Looks like the thing I grabbed him from, Izuku realized. The guy appeared where he had been before, flanked by some purple smoky guy with long yellow eyes. A massive portal behind them opened up, and hundreds of villains poured through. Huddle together and do not move. 13. Protect them, Aizawa yelled, already sprinting down the stairs to face the enemy. Kirishima squinted at them. Huh, what's going on? Is this the activity? He asked, confused. I said don't move, Aizawa yelled, popping his yellow goggles onto his eyes. Those are villains. Eraserhead and 13, the purple guy hummed thoughtfully. According to the curriculum sheet we procured yesterday, All Might is supposed to be here. Aizawa growled angrily, said it was you guys that were behind that whole press ruckus. The guy with hands on him shook his head angrily, scratching viciously at his neck. Where is he? We went through all this trouble. You can't tell me the symbol of peace isn't here. Seriously, Izuku thought, scratch any harder and you'll take your own head off. Quote dot dot dot, I wonder if he'll show up if we kill some kids. At this, most of Izuku's classmates were looking scared, but Izuku himself just smirked. Fuck that noise, he muttered, leaping around 13 and into action. To the other students, it looked like the green-haired boy just flickered, but as soon as he did so, all of the villains in a 50-meter radius of Eraserhead simultaneously dropped like flies. All of the remaining low-level villains in the area looked at the underground hero in shock. I thought his quirk was erasing quirks. It is. What the hell was that, then? Don't ask me. Eraserhead blinked in shock behind his goggles. Then he smirked. I guess that was Midoriya. I'll reprimand him later, but right now I'll gladly take the fear advantage he's given me. The villain saw the smirk, and subconsciously all took a step back. Then the hands guy smiled. Eraserhead, you really are so cool. But even you can't do everything. Kurogiri. Of course, Tamura Shigaraki. The purple guy suddenly disappeared, then appeared behind them just as 13 gave the order to evacuate. Quote dot dot dot, I'm afraid I can't allow that he said ominously. Greetings. We are the League of Villains, and we have invited ourselves into UA Academy in order to engage with a Mr. All Might. We were wondering if we might be allowed to extinguish him, you see. Suddenly, Bakugo and Kirishima rushed towards him, but Kurogiri simply ignored their attacks and enveloped them all, sending them to different places in the facility. Izuku found himself falling into the flood zone, and smiled. Here was a perfect time to test if he could do it. He started running in midair, his legs going as fast they could. As soon as his feet touched the surface, he was off, running across the water. Yes. He spotted Asui falling as well, her tongue reaching out to try and catch and also plummeting Mineta. Izuku was going so fast that to him, it looked as if the two were falling in super slow motion. 
He grinned, and caught the two, speeding up and depositing them back at the entrance. He then zoomed off to each area, picking up his classmates and dropping them back where they had been. Bakugo and Kirishima, check. Yaoyorozu, Jiro and Kaminari, check. Tokiami and Koda, check. He continued until everyone was back, then stood to the side with a smirk. It had all taken less than a couple of seconds. They all blinked in surprise, unsure of what had happened, especially Kurogiri. Hadn't his quirk worked properly? In his confusion, Iida managed to slip out, running to call for help probably. Kurogiri snarled angrily and warped over to Shigaraki's side. Thirteen herded all of the other children out with Izuku beside her. But then Izuku looked back, and saw what he'd done. Having lost their quarries, all of the villains from all of the different zones had gathered in the central area, and now over 200 villains were converging on Eraserhead at once. Oh hell nah, Izuku muttered. He immediately jogged back, his cape billowing out behind him as he jumped down the entire staircase with one leap, making a small crater as he landed. Thirteen and his classmates yelled after him, but it was no use. As he landed, he fixed the villains with a cold glare. Aizawa sensei is the first teacher I've ever had who actually seems to care about me despite the fact that I'm quirkless. You got me fucked up if you think you're gonna hurt him. All of the villains turned to look at him in confusion, Eraserhead taking the brief respite to weave between them and land next to his student. What the hell are you doing here, you problem child? Aizawa asked, panting. He'd almost been overwhelmed, but he'd just managed to slip out. Saving you, it's what we came here to learn, isn't it? Izuku snarked, looking at his teacher. You can't fight without my permission, Midoriya. So give me your permission. Izuku said, bouncing on the balls of his feet. Aizawa looked at the masses of villains in front of them, and sighed. Phi. He didn't even get to finish, Izuku immediately sprinting forwards and punching the ground hard enough to make a shock wave that threw about ten villains back. He then jumped back to beside his teacher, and the two fought back to back, taking out villains with ease. Never thought I'd fight back to back with a first year student. Aizawa said as he took out two villains by smashing their heads together using his tape. Izuku punched a villain in the stomach, sending him flying into two of his allies. Admit it, it's not as bad as you expected, sensei. He grinned, turning to take out a villain who had snuck up on the erasure hero. Thanks, Aizawa muttered. Yeah, you're not so bad, problem child. We probably shouldn't make a habit of it, though. Please don't make that my nickname. But as they continued to fight, Izuku realized something. He was acting like his usual self around his teacher. And it was strange to do it around anyone except his mom, but it felt right. Maybe I should get to know and trust more people, he thought. But that filled him with apprehension. He'd done the exact opposite for years. He couldn't just start socializing. It would be weird. Soon, there were only two left, one with a mutant quirk that was made out of rock, and the other with a quirk that let him shoot his hand and pull it back like a harpoon. Wasting no time, Eraserhead erased the harpoon hand guy's quirk, ensnared him in the capture tape and tossed him up high. Izuku gave the rock man an uppercut to the jaw, sending him up high. He then jumped slightly higher, yelling, Thanks, Sensei. He yelled, doing a front flip into an axe kick, making the villain shoot downwards, smashing into his ally on the way, until they both crashed into the ground with a sickening sound. Aizawa and Izuku fist bumped after the double takedown, then looked over at Shigaraki, only to see something beside him. What the hell is that? Aizawa muttered, looking at the Nomu. Don't ask me, Sensei. I'm as lost as you are. Izuku replied with a smile. Oh please, you should probably leave then, since you're so out of control of the situation, problem child. Aizawa said, taking their moment of respite to raise his goggles and give himself a few eye drops. Izuku, a part of his mind always analyzing and thinking fast, couldn't help but say something. Sensei, you can use your quirk for shorter and shorter periods of time because of your dry eye until you take the drips, yeah. Why don't you just ask the support guys to put an automated eyedrop dispenser somewhere in your goggles? Aizawa slowly turned to face him. Then he smiled. Problem child, you are now officially my favorite student. Izuku went to reply, but was interrupted by the Nomu making a sound that was somewhere between a roar and a screech. They looked at it, and Shigaraki smirked. You may have gotten through the weak opponents, but here are the bosses. Sure you got enough HP left. Aizawa knew what he was talking about. 
staying up late at night all the time meant that he was perfectly well acquainted with playing video games. By the light grin on Izuku's face, the kid understood it too. I don't know, Izuku smiled, you guys look like the small boss fights the game gives you to make sure you're ready to face the actual boss. You sure the real boss isn't behind you or something? Yep, definitely my favorite student. Shigaraki looked torn between being happy that they understood his language, and angry that they'd insulted him like that. You, Ga, Nomu, kill them. Eraserhead glared at the Nomu, erasing its quirks. Why the hell no, how the hell does it have multiple quirks? Problem child, watch out. It's got four key, but that was all Eraserhead could say before he went flying. When he'd erased its quirks, he had expected it to be helpless. But he'd forgotten about the fact that it was still massive. A large fist crashed into him, sending him into the nearby wall. He fell to his knees, unconscious, then tipped forwards. Izuku sped forwards and caught him. Shit, I've got to get him to safety. Thirteen and the rest of class 1A gasped in horror as Eraserhead appeared in front of them, lying on the ground with a clearly broken ribcage and blood on his head. They all crowded around as 13 assessed the damage, hoping that Iida got back soon with as many heroes as possible. But then Jiro said something. Midoriya's still in there. And somehow, they all got even more afraid. Yes, Midoriya was powerful, but could he really beat something that had put their teacher into this condition? Under his helmet, 13's face was tensed up in worry. How could this have happened? He murmured. Izuku appeared back in front of the three of them again. A few of the low-level villains had woken up again, so he kicked them all back down. Then he got into a defensive pose, giving the villains a glare that even Shigaraki shivered at. He only said two sentences, but Kurogiri knew that this would probably turn into a bad situation, just from the tone of the cold voice that delivered them. Come at me, weaklings. You'll pay for that. Chapter 6. Well, here's the other half of the USJ scene. Also, sorry for thinking 13 was a guy. The manga I was reading kept referring to him as a guy, so I just went with that. Then I searched it up after I saw the reviews, and realized I was wrong. Hope you enjoy. Shoji extended an arm with an eye on the end to look in between the crack between the ajar doors of the USJ. Midoriya is, facing off against the three main villains. He said worriedly. He's just said something to them. He looks really angry. Bakugo leapt for the gap in the doors. Fuck no am I letting shitty Deku take all the glory. He yelled, but 13 activated her quirk pulling the door towards her so it slammed shut in his face. Sorry, Shoji, she said, realizing she'd almost caught the boy's eye hand in the door. But some impulsive student needed to be stopped. She looked at Bakugo, who spat to the side in anger. TCH, how come you let him fight, but not me? The explosive boy muttered angrily, punching the wall with a small explosion. Thirteen looked at him again. I didn't realize Midoriya was going until he was already gone, Bakugo. I would prefer it greatly if he was out here with us, but there is no way to get him out without endangering you children. But Midoriya is formidable, hopefully he can hold them off for long enough. We will simply have to wait for Iida to get back with more teachers. I really hope he'll be fine, Shoji said, thinking anxiously of the boy he wanted to become good friends with. Indeed. Tokiyami agreed with folded arms, similar thoughts running through his mind. Dark Shadow came out and nodded solemnly, for once not having an attitude-filled comment to make. Jiro turned and plugged her earphone jacks into the wall of the USJ, hoping she could get a rough idea of how the green-haired boy was doing. But her jacks weren't sensitive enough to pick up anything from that far away, and she pulled them back out, looking defeated until Yaoyorozu came over and hugged her sympathetically. Dot dot dot. Please be alright. Midoriya. The aforementioned Midoriya was pissed. In fact, he thought, I'm beyond pissed off right now. His teacher had erased the thing's quirk no, quirks, apparently and then been taken. It had still been too powerful with its quirks erased for Eraserhead to deal with, and now his teacher was lying out there having taken a critical hit. And it was because Izuku had let his guard down. Thinking that they were fine since its quirks were erased, he had relaxed. And now his teacher had paid the price for it. He glared at them angrily, and Shigaraki laughed. Hey look, it's the last enemy. Let's hit him with our highest stat attack. He said smugly, Nomu, kill him. Izuku barely had time to think before the Nomu was in front of him, drawing an arm back for the most powerful attack it could muster. Then the huge fist hurtled towards his head, 
Shigaraki on his toes in anticipation. But Izuku was faster than that. He caught the arm with one hand, then spun behind the Nomu's back, ripping the arm off. As he threw the appendage away, he punched right through the artificial warrior's back, his fist coming out of the thing's stomach. He then pulled his arm out, shaking the gore off. I know a hero isn't supposed to kill, he thought, but I don't see any other way to stop it. Actually, it should be fine since it isn't human, right? Suddenly, he went flying back and crashed into the wall. He jumped out of the crater that had formed, completely unscathed but now completely furious. That's twice I've led my guard down now. Then he looked at the Nomu. I could have sworn I tore that arm off. And shouldn't there be a hole in his stomach? Then he rolled his eyes. Some type of regeneration quirk, he muttered quietly. As well as super speed I think. Correct. Shigaraki smiled. Hey, since you understand video game language, I'll give you a little tutorial for this mission. Nomu has superhuman strength and superhuman strength, along with super regeneration and shock absorption. If it has shock absorption, how could I punch through it? Izuku asked, glaring at him. Your punch was simply too fast for the quirk to take effect. But Nomu is smart, he won't let you throw a punch that hard again. And with that, the Nomu leapt at Izuku, and they started punching at super speeds. Each of their punches met each other, the wind from their attacks pushing the other two villains back slightly. Izuku smiled. Muda 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 He yelled. W-W-R-R-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y
before shutting it off just before Izuku got right in front of him and punched him in his metal plates. The punch was so powerful that the metal vibrated, affecting Kurogiri's actual vulnerable body. The villain doubled over in pain, and Izuku did it again. Kurogiri got knocked out immediately, and Izuku roared at the ceiling in victory. Then he looked at the three in front of him, along with the hundreds of villains laid unconscious around him. Now, how to get you guys out there? Outside, the students gasped in relief as literally every teacher from UA showed up, with Iida in the lead. Where are Theyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyy
Suddenly he felt an arm go around his shoulder. He looked to his right in confusion, to see Tokiami there, with Dark Shadow giving him a thumbs up as well. Are you okay, my trusted companion? Yeah, bro, you good? Izuku was about to turn away and keep mentally berating himself, but then he remembered that feeling he'd experienced when bantering with Eraserhead. Maybe, having friends wouldn't be too bad. Quote dot dot dot. Yeah, I'm good, I guess. He said, getting up. Tokiami blinked in surprise, and then smiled a little and got up himself, watching as Midoriya let himself get smothered by Shoji in a three-armed bro hug. Suddenly, a purple blur slammed into Izuku, and he looked down to see Jiro hugging him. You idiot, you could have died, my friends aren't allowed to die, she yelled, hitting his chest repeatedly. All of the girls, especially Midnight, saw how muscled Izuku was in his costume, and started to drool slightly. I wish I was the one hugging him right now, they all thought in unison. Evidently, Jiro realized as well, because she jumped back, blushing. Don't do that again, okay? She pleaded. Izuku was in a dilemma now. I'm new to this whole friends thing. What should I do? Tease her. I don't know, you look glad to have gotten that opportunity to feel me up. Izuku smirked, and immediately received a jack to the ear, which still hurt quite a bit if he was being honest. His skin was like rock at this point, but apparently her jacks could insert into anything. Don't say stuff like that, Jiro yelled, and channeled her heartbeat into the jacks. Izuku yelled out in shock. Okay, maybe not tease her. Suddenly, the police showed up, quickly apprehending the now deformed and broken Nomu, and they were all sent back to class except for Izuku, who was to be taken for immediate questioning. But as the class left, Jiro suddenly could only think of one thing that made her go bright red again. Why the hell was I hugging Midoriya? Shigaraki and Kurogiri fell out of the portals, landing at the feet of all for one as they began to wake. You are both lucky that I heard Kurogiri's call for help, the baritone voice said slowly. And what of Nomu? Shigaraki growled, we were all defeated, by this kid, he was far more powerful than All Might. We didn't even see the, symbol of peace, he muttered, and I don't know what his quirk is. Hmm, you truly know nothing of him. Yes, Shigaraki muttered, and yet, I want him dead. 877 Chapter 7 So anyone from my Pyo stories that's come to ask what the hell is wrong with me, sorry. I got a bit caught up in this story, I'm just using this one to write for until I can get a clear view of where I want to take those ones. Once I know, I'll hop back on them. Okay, so I made references to two of the best anime characters ever last chapter. Didn't anybody see them? Anyway, this is just a filler chapter before we get into the sports festival arc. Hope you enjoy. It was the day after the USJ attack. The school had given them the day off, so Izuku had left his alarm off and slept in for a while. He looked out of his window and smiled at the bright sky, birds flying across it without a care in the world. He looked around his room next. Although it was a bit spartan in places, it had all he needed, workout equipment, his gaming consoles and PCs, and his cupboards, closets and desks. It was a bit messy, so he spent about 10 minutes tidying both it and himself up. Then he stepped out of his room, the furious mood from the day before almost gone. Then he saw the expression on his mom's face, and immediately realized that his bright mood might not be there to stay. Izuku, we need to talk. She said seriously. He nodded and sat down next to her. This is about the attack, right? Mom, it was fine, I... She interrupted him, a worried look on her face. No, it's not that. You said you controlled it fine, and I trust you, Izuku. It's this. Izuku winced very visibly as he looked at the notebook in her hand. Shit, how did she get that? When you came over to get your bento before heading to the USJ, you accidentally dropped it. Or it fell from your bag. Either way, I thought it was one of your normal hero notebooks and decided to read some before bed. And it turns out this was not one of your normal notebooks. Mom, I can explain. This already did all the explaining. She said, waving the book around frantically. I know writing down what you're feeling is good for you, in fact I even suggested it when you briefly stopped talking to me that one time. But according to this, you've been containing them here and pushing everyone away from you for years. Izuku hung his head, but I've been just fine doing this. Why? Because it's not healthy, Izuku. Inko told her son, hugging him vigorously. I'm glad you didn't keep me out at least, but would you please consider getting a social life? Izuku smirked, 
It's not very nice to tell your son to get a life, mom. He said gently. His mother clung to him even harder. Izuku, I didn't mean it that way. Please, just, try to be nice to everyone, okay? You'll see how much better life is when you have people you can depend on. Suddenly, Izuku's phone started to blow up with messages. He looked at it in confusion. My only contacts are mom and dad, although I've never used dads. So who the hell? He looked at the screen curiously, his mum peeking over his shoulder as well. He got even more confused when he saw it was the same text over and over again. Unknown number, Midoriya, 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 unknown number, Midoriya. He stared at his phone as they continued to come in. He was pretty sure the person was just copy and pasting now. Or maybe they'd typed in his name so many times that they just had to put in the letter, M, and the suggestion would appear. Either way, he was getting annoyed. Me. Who the hell is this? He'd forgotten that his mom was also looking, and got a hearty slap over the head for the language. Instead of disciplining him, though, his mother ended up wincing as her hand started to ache like she'd just slapped a stone wall. Unknown number. It's Jiro. Unknown number. Why did it take you so long for you to respond I was literally blowing your phone to bits? Me. How did you get my number? Izuku asked as he saved her number in his phone, wondering why she was trying to get his attention anyway. Jiro. Bakugo gave me it when I asked. Jiro. On the condition that I annoy you by sending you so many texts that your phone vibrates and falls off the table like there's a damn earthquake. Izuku rolled his eyes as he turned to give his mother an accusing look. And I wonder how on earth Bakugo could have gotten my number, hm. Inko smiled sheepishly, rubbing her arm. Well, I gave your number to Mitsuki to put on his phone. To be fair, I tried to give you Katsuki's, and you threw it out. Why would I want oh, fair enough. Izuku said, realizing halfway through the sentence that he had never actually told his mother how bad the bullying from Bakugo had actually gotten. Come to think of it, had he even told her it was happening in the first place. He sincerely hoped he hadn't, it would probably make the talk even worse. And speaking of Bakugo, why didn't you tell me he was bullying you like that? Shit, I keep forgetting she's read the notebook. Jiro. Midoriya. I swear, you'll feel the maximum power of my jacks if you've left me on read. Izuku looked at the texts as his phone buzzed, and he paled in fear. Jiro's earphone jacks were one of the few things in the world that could make him feel fear and he'd very much rather avoiding a confrontation with said Jax. Me. Still here sorry. Me. What was it you wanted? Jiro. Want to hang out. Jiro. They gave us this day off so they can get themselves together, and so we could recover, but dude thanks to you there's nothing to recover from. Inko smiled proudly at her son, that is until she saw him typing, can't I'm busy. Izuku, what did I just ask you? She said sternly. The teen smiled sheepishly. Uh, you asked why I didn't tell you Bakugo was bullying me. Inko rolled her eyes, but took one of his hands in both of hers. That's not what I meant and you know it. Promise me you'll try and be good to everyone. She asked, smiling at him hopefully. Izuku had never been able to deny his mom. Quote dot dot dot. Yeah, sure thing, mom. He sighed, telling Jiro that he was down to hang out. She replied that she would get Tokiami and Shoji, and to meet at Dagoba Beach. And is this Jiro person a good friend of yours? Is he nice? Uh, yeah, she's okay. Izuku said, rubbing the back of his neck bashfully, before sitting up ramrod straight as he realized his mistake. Please don't notice, please don't notice, please don't notice. But Inko Midoriya had frozen in shock and motherly pride. S she, a girl. Izuku hotfooted it out of there before Midoriya Mom Waterworks Inc. opened for the day. Izuku strolled towards the beach, dropping down in the warm sand once he got there. He had the thought of looking for his three classmates, but ended up not bothering. Jiro called me here, he thought lazily, she can find me if she wants. About half a minute later, a rather familiar voice sounded from just beside him. Midoriya. Izuku didn't even bother opening his eyes. He couldn't be bothered to put up with her shit today. Ashido. Something you need. Yeah, actually, I need to apologize. Mina said quietly, sitting in the sand next to him. That got Izuku's attention. Huh, well, I was kind of a bitch to you, just because you destroyed us in the entrance exam. 
Mina said bashfully, not able to make eye contact because Izuku refused to open his eyes. No kidding, Izuku muttered. Mina slapped his chest. Uh, sorry. Still trying to get the hang of being a good person I guess, he scowled. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that, and maybe hope we could become friends. Mina said hopefully. Izuku didn't even think about what she'd said, anything to be left alone. Whatever, why is your hand copping a feel on my muscles? Mina looked down and suddenly blushed lilac. She hadn't noticed that she hadn't moved her hand away when she'd slapped him, and was now absentmindedly touching up his abs. In seconds, the normally flirty and outgoing Mina was reduced to a stuttering mess, and sprinted away down the beach. Ah, peace and quiet, Midoriya thought. Sorry, mom, but I've grown used to being like this. Sup, how long have you been here? Came Shoji's voice as the six-armed teen sat down beside him. The boy realized Izuku looked a bit more confused than normal, so decided to try cheering him up a bit. Also, was that Mina running away like a lil, bye. Language, shouted a blonde man as he jogged past them. Never mind, Shoji's cool. Izuku gave the boy a fist bump. Not long, only five minutes or so. And yeah, she wanted to apologize for something or other. He explained nonchalantly. Bro, you even gonna wear the mask at the beach? Yeah, sometimes my face scares people, that's why I wear it. The boy replied, looking out at the waves. Hey Midoriya, you know how you're really smart and interested in quirks and stuff. Yep, well, the Dupli Arms user said, would you mind helping me think up ideas for my costume sometime? Yes sir, now if you'll excuse me, I would like to ask you to make use of your quirk. Izuku said, he was already thinking of ideas for the suit, but they could wait. Um, sure, what for? Shoji asked, turning all his hands into eyes and ears. I sense impending danger and I don't know why. Midoriya told him, burrowing into the sand to get a bit more comfortable. Shoji looked around for a few seconds, then winced so heavily it was clearly visible even with the mask. Midoriya, I'd run if I were you. Izuku's eyes snapped open. What is it? It's G. He didn't even finish before Izuku had leapt up. The green-haired boy was still too slow though, and received a jack in the back of the knee for his troubles. Tokiami, standing behind Jiro, shook his head with a smile as the rocker girl started ranting at Izuku. She has been searching meticulously for him for the past 10 minutes. The crow-headed boy laughed to Shoji, who chuckled as well. Bets on how quickly they'll get together. Shoji murmured, I say by the hero internships. Loser goes five rounds with Midoriya. I believe you to be optimistic. Tokiami smirked, I shall watch from the shadows, but I foresee it to be later. It will happen, but as for when, I cannot say. Of course, Jiro heard it all with her quirk-aided hearing and turned to them, her face bright red. It's not like that, she yelled, stomping towards them. Run, Shoji advised quickly. Indeed, Tokiami agreed, and they both took off as Jiro chased them. Midoriya had no clue what was going on, but he laughed all the same as he watched Dark Shadow come out, then immediately dive back into Fumikage's chest. This is on you, the quirk yelled as it disappeared again, and everyone laughed, including Tokiami himself. The four played around for a while, Izuku also telling them how the beach had somehow miraculously cleared up, and then Shoji and Tokiami went down closer to the waterline to see who could make the better sand fortress, Shoji with his many arms, or Tokiami with the help of Dark Shadow's meticulous accuracy. This left Izuku and Jiro sitting next to each other peacefully, watching their two friends. I'm glad you decided to join us, the rocker girl said quietly, scooting a little closer to him and hoping he would put an arm around her or something. Izuku was oblivious, however, and just nodded. I'm glad I listened to my mom and gave the friendship thing a chance. This has been fun, with just you three that I'm more comfortable around. I guess I should start getting to know everyone, huh? He said, rubbing his neck. Jiro huffed, but agreed with him nonetheless. It has been nice, hasn't it? She said, I've enjoyed hanging with you, dude. Hopefully he'll get the hint this time. Over the night, she'd gotten barely any sleep thinking about why she kept trying to be friends with him and why she'd hugged him out of nowhere. It had taken her from 11 at night till 3 in the morning to even admit to herself that she already had a high school crush. The rest of the night was spent convincing herself to do something about it. Izuku was still just as clueless. Geez, is he trying to act like Kaminari or something? She thought. Meanwhile, a few meters away, 
a group of friends were staring at them. One look and Izuku knew who they were. They were all from his class in middle school, and they were all staring at him in shock. He could pretty much guess what they were thinking. Midoriya got a social life. At a school Bakugo goes to. The green-haired teen just ignored them, and soon took his leave. They all decided to go home for the day, and all headed off in different directions. After a minute of walking, Izuku heard running footsteps behind him and turned around to see Jiro sprinting towards him. Huh, something wrong, he asked as she stopped and caught her breath. Yeah, I forgot to give you something, Midoriya, Jiro said hesitantly. Izuku looked even more confused. Had he dropped something, was that it? What is it? He asked out loud. Jiro stood on her tiptoes and pecked him on the cheek, before going bright red, tapping the ends of her jacks together, and sprinting off. Izuku Midoriya didn't move from that spot for hours, until he was pulled out of his trance by his mom calling to ask where on earth he was. Tokiami, who had come back to watch as soon as he saw Jiro sprinting towards Midoriya, shook his head in annoyance. Do not tell me that I could have been mistaken in my prediction. He groaned. Shoji, who had done the exact same thing and was now in the tree above without the bird head's knowledge, grinned. Forget about being a hero, I should just bet on ships for a living. Shoji extended one of his arms down next to Tokiami's ear, put a mouth on it, and whispered quietly, told you. Before whipping it back up, Tokiami spun around, but saw nothing. Although if he'd listened hard, he would have heard Shoji muffling his laughter above him. He didn't though, and had to walk home knowing the bed was as good as lost. Drat, Chapter 8, Star Wars Reference Somewhere in this chapter. Shigaraki laughed as he watched the reporter that he'd just paid walk into the building. After thinking back on the failed USJ attack, he had remembered the name of the student, Eraserhead having said it when he first arrived. Midoriya, he grinned, you want to humiliate me? Then I'll use you to humiliate you, eh? Nezu, 13, Detective Sukauchi and Eraserhead were sitting in the press conference room, being deafened by questions about the USJ and blinded by the flashing of cameras. Aizawa would rather not be here, but he had healed enough that he could move around, and that was all the press needed to call for him in. Please, one at a time, Nezu said loudly, his smile a little strained, you, what's your question? What actions are the school taking to prevent this happening again? The reporter asked. We are working to increase security, and investigating how the villains got in in the first place. Nezu said briskly, next. A skinny man in the front row raised his hand. Approximately how long did it take for the staff to get the situation under control? He asked. Nezu and Aizawa exchanged a glance. They were on live news television, it wouldn't be good to let them know about Midoriya's part in it. I would need to review the security footage and get back to you for that answer, Nezu said, astutely deflecting the question. And that's when disaster struck. Another reporter raised his hand with a pleasant smile. If I may, the teachers did not get the situation under control. Instead, according to one of my sources, it was handled by a student. At this, Aizawa flinched, and all of the reporters turned to them, gasping. Shit, how does he know? Is he bluffing? Class 1A's homeroom teacher thought. Quote dot dot dot. His name is Midoriya, according to my source. Shit, either problem child was bragging, which is unlikely, or the league tipped him off. Aizawa decided to say something. They couldn't really lie about it at this point. Yes, Izuku Midoriya took out a lot of the villains that attacked. He and I took out all of the low-level villains, and then when I got badly injured while facing the Nomu, he got me out and took out the three villain bosses. For our watchers and listeners, what is a Nomu? A reporter asked, and all of her colleagues nodded. The detective took this one. The Nomu is a beast they made that holds multiple quirks. We have it in custody right now, but it is unknown whether there are more. If one is seen, call heroes immediately. They all nodded. Then the same reporter who had mentioned Midoriya spoke up again. But the real question is, why was a student fighting in the first place instead of evacuating? 13 spoke up. He helped gather his classmates, and we all evacuated while Eraserhead held them off. But he ran back when he saw that the villains targeting his classmates had gone for Eraserhead, and were about to overwhelm him. Eraserhead took over. I made the decision that Midoriya should be allowed to fight. I believed he was capable enough to do so and he proved me right as we took out all of the villains together. He also evacuated me when I was injured, and then took out the Nomu and the league leaders before the rest of the staff got there. He nodded once at them all, before getting up abruptly, 
signifying the end of his answers for the press conference. If anyone believes that Midoriya shouldn't have fought, I take full responsibility for that. He walked out, leaving the other three to answer the rest of the questions. As soon as Aizawa got home that night, he put on his gaming console to try and wind down. Putting in a random hero game, he started an online duel match and got ready to fight. Then he heard his opponent connect in the chat. You really should make it less obvious who you are on these consoles, Aizawa sensei. Aizawa grinned. Problem, child, do you know how much trouble you caused me at that conference? Uh, whoops. Pro hero Eraserhead smiled as he chose himself as his character. Midoriya, I have no clue how you found me, but prepare to get destroyed. The next day they were back in school again. As Izuku walked into the building, he was passed by tape guy and guy who gets hard. Wait, that sounded wrong. Yo, Midoriya, one of them said as they passed. This was a routine at this point. They'd walk past him and greet him, he'd ignore them as usual, and they'd all make their way to class. And it was about to happen again, until Izuku's mom's words echoed in his head. Try to be nice to everyone, okay. You'll see how much better life is when you have people you can depend on. He sighed. What's up, guys? He murmured. Both of the boys in front of him turned around with wide eyes. Did he just? Tape guy muttered. Acknowledge us. His companion finished. Yes. Midoriya, welcome to the bro squad. He yelled, running back and throwing his arm over his shoulder. Okay, friends are nice, but this is too much. Tape guy slung his arm around his shoulders from the other side. Not sure if you bothered to learn our names yet. I'm Siro, this is Kirishima. Thank goodness for that, wouldn't want to call you, Tape guy, forever. Izuku rubbed the back of his neck slightly nervous. He'd faced down villains easily, but trying to make friends was way harder. Hey. The entire class grew silent with shock as Kirishima and Siro walked in with Midoriya, the first two grinning and laughing while the green-haired boy smiled nervously. They were having an animated conversation, and only stopped when Iida scolded them to get into their seats. As they did so, Mineta leaned over to Siro, who was next to him. Whoa, what's your secret for becoming friends with the chick magnet? He whispered, maybe Midoriya can teach me some stuff on how to get faster so I can grab some boobs before they even know I'm there. Siro looked at him, he's kinda closed off, but if you start talking about quirks with him, he opens right up. He murmured back. Mineta immediately jumped up and ran over to Izuku. Midoriya, how you been, man? Hey, wanna know more about my key? That was as far as he got before his green-haired classmate, without even looking at him, gave him an uppercut so hard that he flew up and back, hit the ceiling, and landed on his seat, dazed. Don't like you, Midoriya muttered, and Siro and Kirishima gulped. So if it turned out Midoriya hadn't liked them when they had talked to him so familiarly, that would have happened. Midoriya glanced at them and realized what they were thinking. I just hate perverts, don't worry, he muttered. As they nodded in relief, he brought out his notebook and started writing down who he'd want to know better. Jiro, Tokiami and Shoji are all really cool. Kirishima and Siro are good guys, if a bit enthusiastic. Mineta is a piece of shit. Bakugo is also a piece of shit. Mina apologized, and I'm still not sure why, so I'll be wary there. Iida is so strict it's kinda scary. Uraraka seems alright I guess. Very bubbly. I know absolutely nothing about tail guy and invisible girl. Asui is the frog girl's name I think. She seems a bit blunt, but nice. She was even willing to save Mineta, so that counts for extra niceness points. Todoroki is silent and seems to hate me, no clue why. The girl who creates stuff out of her boobs ga, I sound like Mineta out of her skin, seems alright too. But posh maybe, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Kaminari seems like a mix between Siro and Mineta, maybe. A good guy, but with perverted tendencies. I've never heard Koda even speak. Can he speak? Sugar Rush guy seems pretty chilled out. He mentioned something about cooking the other day. Maybe we could talk about that. Wait, who bonds over cooking conversations? The French guy who shoots lasers out of his belly button. Honestly, he's so weird it's scary. He looked over his list. Was doing stuff like this considered weird? He wouldn't know. Ah oh well, he would probably try and get to know Sugar Rush guy or something. Just then, Aizawa walked in, the sight of bandages wrapped tightly around his torso making Izuku wince. The teacher noticed this, and gestured towards him. Before we start, let me talk to you outside, Midoriya. 
After they left the classroom, Asui said in her usual manner, he's probably gonna die. Indeed, Iida reciprocated, although Midoriya did save the day, he acted quite out of line. Ah, cut the guy some slack. Kirishima grinned. To be honest, I think Aizawa sensei might be thanking him for saving him. Shut it, shitty hair. Bakugo yelled, Kirishima looking at him in surprise. That useless Deku better be getting expelled. Just then, the Deku in question walked back into the room, followed by Aizawa. The class gave the two inquisitive looks, but couldn't glean anything from the poker faces the two were masters at. Then Aizawa said something that surprised them all. I've got the security footage from the USJ. Right now, we're going to review everyone's performances in it. But won't it all just be Midori bro? Kirishima asked curiously. Yes, most of it. I will review the little you all did. Then, Midoriya's punishment shall be for everyone to review him. Too fucking lenient, Bakugo thought. And to be honest, he wasn't wrong. Out loud, he yelled, let's fucking go and review the useless trash then. Aizawa turned off the lights and then switched it on. They watched as the villain's portal appeared, Izuku sprinting over and grabbing Shigaraki as soon as he stepped out. When some of them marveled that the camera could follow Izuku's speed, Aizawa spoke up. Thanks to some kid with a speed quirk a few years ago that kept running around and causing trouble, the cameras were all upgraded. They can just capture the speeds Midoriya was going at during this battle. The teacher said in a bored tone. I doubt that was his full speed, though. Then they saw Shigaraki leap towards Mina, and Midoriya knocked the hand aside just in time. Asui looked at the teacher. Aizawa sensei, aren't you going to comment on our reaction speeds being too slow? Aizawa paused it and shook his head. No, because even I was caught off guard. He said, playing it again. The class watched as Izuku punched the villain, sending him flying back. You gotta teach me how to punch like that, Midoriya. Mineta said. The aforementioned Midoriya turned at him and glared so hard that the purple-headed boy almost fell of his seat in fear. The class watched as Eraserhead leapt down the stairs and into action, telling them not to move. Then watched Midoriya immediately move. The green-haired teen jumped down, punched the ground to create a shockwave, then jumped back up again, making the villain start to fear the pro-hero in front of them. That's the first time Midoriya disobeyed orders, Kiro. Asui remarked. Izuku winced. He didn't regret it, but he'd rather everyone spared him from being pointed out. Soon, they saw Kurogiri appear in front of them as Thirteen tried to convince Iida to run for help when she realized her communication device wasn't working. He hesitated, and in that moment Bakugo and Kirishima rushed forward. Aizawa paused it there. Iida, what was that? The student in question looked down at his desk. Quote dot dot dot. I hesitated. And why would that be? Aizawa pressed. I did not want to leave my classmates to fight the threat alone. I, I wanted to stay and fight alongside everyone, not run away and hope they survived. Iida burst out, gripping his table hard. Aizawa nodded. I thought that might be it. Listen, Iida, 13 ordered you to go for help, not only as your teacher but also as the pro hero entrusted with your safety. She did not ask you to run away. She asked you to get help. There is a difference. Iida nodded sharply. I understand. My sincerest apologies. Try to think about it. Now, Aizawa said, moving on. Kirishima, Bakugo, care to explain what was going on in your heads at that moment? Bakugo huffed. I was gonna kill that piece of shit. Kirishima's sweat dropped nervously. Uh, I knew that he had to be held off long enough for everyone to get by. I didn't really count on him being completely made out of mist, I thought there would be a physical body inside. Aizawa nodded. Pretty good reasoning. You were just unlucky it didn't work out. Bakugo, do you have anything to add on to your reasoning? TCH. Bakugo spat. Nah, was just gonna blast it until I saw a weakness in the piece of shit. Hmm. Aizawa nodded, shrugging noncommittally. In a situation like that, follow the pro hero's lead. He said in reply, you too, Kirishima. He played it again, and they watched as they were scattered across the facility, only to be herded back by Izuku. Many of the girls blushed profusely at the sight of Midoriya carrying them bridal style, especially Mina and Jiro. Izuku himself just shook his head wearily, as if I was even thinking about that at the time. Aizawa paused it again. Asui, well done for deciding to try and catch Mineta before you hit the water. I can imagine it wasn't a very pleasant decision to make, he said, ignoring the small, hey, 
From the grape-headed boy. The frog girl nodded. It was just reflex, Kiro. They then watched as Iida took the opportunity to run out amidst the confusion. Aizawa nodded approvingly at him, and the blue-haired boy smiled faintly. At that, Kurogiri went back to join Shigaraki, and the rest of them evacuated. The class saw Izuku look back, and they all realized why he'd gone back. The villains meant for us were all going for sensei. Shoji said in realization, and everyone nodded. Doesn't change the fact that you shouldn't have done it. Aizawa said to Midoriya, with the student nodding, biting his lip. They all listened to the conversation that occurred between Midoriya and Aizawa as the villains regrouped. Jiro smirked. You gave him permission pretty quick, Aizawa sensei. Were you in trouble? Aizawa glared at her, making her sit up straight, adjust her uniform, and stare at the screen intently. But suddenly that was forgotten as the class watched the student and teacher duo work together to take down around 200 villains. They all held their breaths in excitement. This is so cool. They've even got time to banter as they do it. Siro said, gaping. Then they all realized something. Midoriya can banter. Izuku rubbed the back of his neck bashfully. Whatever. They saw the two go up against the three main villains. Eraserhead's hair floating as he erased the Nomu's quirk. Him warning Midoriya that it had multiple quirks. And then the Nomu's foot going straight into their teacher's ribcage. They all winced in pain, and then heard a loud crack behind them. They turned around to see Midoriya holding his desk in two pieces, glaring at himself in the video furiously. Izuku then looked at Aizawa, who gave him a meaningful nod, reminding them of what they'd talked about outside the class. Izuku followed Aizawa out of the class. What's wrong, sensei, he said, forcing a joking tone into his voice. Or do you just want to brag about beating me online last night? Midoriya, the teacher said solemnly, Nezu told me you were beating yourself up about it. Izuku hung his head low. Yeah, I let my guard down three times. The first time, it meant you almost died. The second time wasn't too bad. The third, the third, I let the two main villains get away, damn it. Aizawa sighed. Problem child. The first time, I let my guard down as well. And I told you it had multiple quirks, which probably distracted you as well. Not your fault. And the third time, nobody could have done anything. Izuku smirked. I guess. Anyway, I swore never to let my guard down again, so I'm fine now. Learn from your mistakes and all that. You certainly didn't learn from your mistakes last night. That's what she said. Midoriya, I'll beat you up. No, you won't. I will do what I must. You will try. Izuku smiled faintly at the way that conversation had ended. He needed to get over his mistakes already. Then he looked down at his desk. Huh, when that happened, he muttered, and everyone chuckled. He just scowled at them all. On the screen, Izuku took Aizawa outside, and then came back in, promising pain to the villains. They saw the big door slam shut due to 13's quirk, and all subconsciously sat up and paid a bit more attention, even Bakugo. What had happened in there, for Midoriya to win so comprehensively? This is where, analyze Midoriya, get serious. Pay attention, Aizawa said, it basically didn't matter though, since everyone was already so focused on the video that they barely heard him. They saw Shigaraki order the Nomu forward, and following his orders, it leapt at their classmate with incredible speed. They all gasped as, in one fluid move, Midoriya twisted its arm off and punched through its back. Aizawa paused it there. Any comments? Uh, Kaminari started, like, I know Bakugo always says die. But Midoriya, you went for the kill, like, immediately. Isn't that kinda bad? Dude. What? Izuku asked belligerently. It's not as if it's a human. Actually, it is, Aizawa said, making Izuku snap his head around to look at him in shock. The researchers in Tartarus have determined that it's a human, modified to be able to take on multiple quirks. Izuku paled. Shit, I would never have tried to kill it if I knew. Ha, Bakugo shouted. A real villain, huh, ain't ya? Midoriya just ignored him, but he had a point. Which means Midoriya has to be more careful, non. Aoyama sparkled. Aizawa nodded. Watch out for details like that. Thy watched in awe as the thing regenerated, and listened to Shigaraki explain its quirks. They then watched as Midoriya and the Nomu went at it, trading blows at super speeds for whole minutes. They concluded that Midoriya wasn't going serious, though, since he was referencing animes. They watched as their classmate then toyed around with the Nomu, giving it pain for what it did to their teacher. 
And then he said three words that sent the whole class into disorder. Consecutive normal punches. He then destroyed the Nomu extremely quickly, making the villains angrier and the watching classmates yell in shock. He made up his own S-U-P-E-R-M-O-V-E. -E. So cool. Bakugo winced. Suddenly, Deku's more powerful as me. What? The? Fuck. I think I need to put him in his place. About five minutes and a whole lot of Deku criticism later, they were watching as Izuku carried all the villains up the stairs two by two at supersonic speed. They then saw All Might crash through the door just before Midoriya was going to kick it open. Never fear, for I am Nani. I still think you should have said, Hey Nani, I'm Deku. Said the voice of Kakarot Bardoxen right next to his ear. Yeah, next time, wait, who, I was never here. Huh, Izuku said, turning back to the teacher. Whatever. Aizawa got up. Now, I've compiled information on all the villains that were in the areas you were sent to. He spoke. You'll split into the groups you were split into by Kurogiri, and by learning more about each other and your quirks, you'll figure out how you could have won if a certain green-haired menace wasn't present. I'll give you 45 minutes. Izuku raised his hand. Uh, what shall I do, sensei? Aizawa pointed out of the door. You're coming with me. Twenty minutes into the future saw a content Izuku Midoriya in the staff lounge, playing Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Eyes of Heaven against an equally contented-looking Shota Aizawa. Meanwhile, the rest of Class 1A were sweating hard over their new group assignments. In the back of the lounge, All Might smiled. If this wasn't favoritism, he didn't know what was. And to think that Aizawa was well known for expelling students right off the bat. He walked over to the two of them. Good morning. Shota, young Midoriya. Both of them just nodded, staring intently at the screen. All Might sat down beside them, and sighed. I'll get straight to the point. Young Midoriya, I want you to inherit my quirk. Izuku dropped his controller in shock, and Aizawa smirked as he took advantage of that to finish him off with a quick ARRIARRIARRI. Arrivederci. The teacher smirked, before seeing the shock on Izuku's face. Wait, didn't you already know, problem child? I, I knew about All Might's, tall golem, form, yes. He said, All Might huffed at that, but this is new. All Might decided to explain. My quirk is called, one for all. It's basically a mix of a quirk that stockpiles power, and one that allows people to pass the quirk on. It has been passed on for generations, and now I am offering it to you. I have been watching you, and believe that even though you hide it, you have a heart more heroic than any of us. He said, extending his hand. Will you take it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a bit fast. Izuku said, I'm sorry, but I can't take the quirk, anyway. I'm too strong already. Plus, my whole thing is becoming a quirkless hero, remember? Yes, I thought you'd refuse. Not because of that, though, but because you hated me. He smiled. Nah, I kinda forgave you. Izuku smirked, just trying to follow my mum's advice. Okay, All Might said. Anyway, I was wondering if you would help me find a successor instead, then. Your class seems very strong. Aizawa interrupted. I thought Night Eye was grooming that kid Mirio to get it. He said. All Might shook his head. No, Mirio is a good hero, but I can't tell what he's thinking. He's always got this artificial smile on his face. Midoriya and Aizawa stared at him flatly. Do you really have the right to talk down someone else for that? Well, I agree to your request. Midoriya said, this seems really important, plus it gives me another reason to get to know my classmates better. All Might transformed into his buff form. Thank you, young Midoriya. I greatly appreciate this. Transforming back, he continued. It goes without saying that one for all remains a secret. Who actually knows about it? Midoriya asked as he and Aizawa started another game. All Might leaned back in his chair, thinking. Hmm, Shota here. Recovery Girl and Nezu are the only teachers who know about it, although all of the teachers know about my skinny form. Detective Sukauchi and an old hero called Gran Torino also know. Being a hero nerd and all after spending so many afternoons with nothing to do but analyze heroes and their quirks having stopped running after, Kachan, Midoriya immediately recognized the name. Gran Torino. He was cool, he could shoot air out of his feet. Hung out with a hero that suddenly got way more, powerful during daughter, hero career. He glanced briefly at All Might. Nana Shimura had one for all, didn't she? All Might winced at the name, but smiled. Yes, she was my master. Pretty cool, Izuku muttered. Yeah, 
I'll help you. Still got a couple of questions, though. Why did Shimura suddenly disappear? All Might visibly winced again. Let me tell you a story of all for one and one for all, young man. Ten minutes later, Aizawa and Midoriya walked back to class. Both looked visibly shaken. Even I didn't know that part. That was, something, the teacher remarked. Izuku nodded, and now I gotta start scoping out people. Yeah, now, pretend we were training. Aizawa said just before they walked back into the class. Midoriya, what were you doing? Siro called when they got in. I beat Aizawa sensei in an eating contest. Aizawa glared at him. I said pretend we were training. Was the meaning the look conveyed? Izuku smirked back. Ah, but you didn't specify what type of training. Midoriya, I don't even know what to do with you. Now, I'm sure you were wondering why I made you do all of that today. It was to help you learn more about yourselves. Because, the UA, sports festival is coming up. Oh yeah, half of the students yelled. I forgot this was a school. Hold on a minute, Mineta shouted. That sounds like something villains would try to infiltrate. Will it be alright? Izuku turned around. Mineta, shut it, it'll be fine. Have you even seen the festival? Of course I have, Midoriya. Mineta replied with no small amount of sass. Of course, that just earned him another glare. This time, he almost unironically pissed himself. Midoriya is right, it will be fine. Apparently security will be five times that of recent years. Aizawa said, instead of that, you all should be thinking about what a great chance this is for you. The whole of Japan watches this event. All of the pro heroes will be scouting us. The creation girl realized with a gasp. Correct, Yaoyorozu, Aizawa replied. Oh, Yaoyorozu is her name. It's amazing how quickly you can learn names if you just listen out for them. Before, I just didn't care. Listen, this is your chance to get noticed by the big heroes. And you only get three of these, so try not to waste them. Aizawa advised, and they all nodded. Hmm, I think I'll become a sidekick at a famous pro heroes agency and then eventually go pro. Kaminari said, thinking about his plans for after school. Yeah, but there are those who get stuck as sidekicks forever and miss their chances to become solo pro heroes. And you seem like exactly that kind of dumbass, Kaminari. Jiro remarked. Kaminari slammed his head onto the table while everyone chuckled. After school, Midoriya found himself walking behind Uraraka while they hyped themselves up for the sports festival. He was about to put earphones in to block their voices out when he heard Iida ask why the girl wanted to be a hero. Seems like my career in spying for All Might begins here, huh, he thought, listening in. Well, this is kind of embarrassing, but it's for the money, she replied. The money, Iida asked. Yeah, my family has never been that well off, so I'm becoming a hero so I can make sure my parents never have to work again. I know, it's not that noble or whatever. Uraraka, do not let anyone make you believe that is not a noble reason. Your drive to become a hero is propagated by familial love. How honorable, Iida reassured her, chopping his hands through the air. Izuku nodded surreptitiously, he's not wrong, it's not actually that bad of a reason. We don't live in a world where heroes are vigilantes that give up their lives to do it, but it's more of a job now. However, I don't really think this is the kind of noble heart of a hero All Might's looking for. So why do you want to be a hero, Iida? Uraraka asked, bouncing next to the blue-haired teen as they entered the train station. As I told you the day I became class president, I come from a long line of heroes in my family. I must uphold the family name, and become the most honorable hero ever. There is no civilian I won't protect. Iida answered, his hands now chopping with more intensity. Izuku was tempted to put a block of wood under Iida's hand, see if he could break it. A pretty good reason. However, it kinda sounds like he feels under a little pressure from his family reputation, but doesn't realize it. If something happened to Ingenium, he'd probably feel pressured to take revenge. And with that, Izuku got on the train. Seems like we can cross Uraraka and Iida out. He hugged his mom as soon as he stepped into the house. The sports festival is coming up soon. Wish me luck. Of course, Izuku, do your best and win. Inko said, she was already planning to get the neighborhood moms together to watch it with her. Izuku smiled, walking off to his room to practice some theoretical body moving techniques he'd seen online. They might come in handy if he was getting attacked midair. And in no time at all, the sports festival was upon them. Well, damn. I started writing, and I just couldn't stop. Hope you enjoyed it.
Someone in the reviews can't remember who made a good point about how Mina's personality offsets Izuku's well in this story. It's made me rethink my ship choice for this story. So from now, there will be both Izujiro and Izumina moments, and I guess he'll end Yuo with whoever gets more support as we go through. Please review. If I don't know what you're enjoying or not enjoying about the story, how am I supposed to write it well? Chapter 9. Responses to some reviews at the bottom. Gather round. Mass media. This year, all your favorite high school kids will run free once again. Present Mike's voice screamed out. The UA Sports Festival has begun. Everybody, are you RRRRREADYYYY? Izuku heard the shout and raised an eyebrow. I've got no choice but to be ready. Everyone's expecting great things, I guess, even students from other classes. Two weeks earlier, everyone in class 1A got up from their desks, stretching. It was the end of the day, and frankly, Izuku couldn't wait to get home. He was meeting up with Shoji, Jiro and Tokiami later to help them train, and he wanted a nap first. He and Bakugo stepped up to the door and reached for the handle at the same time, and Bakugo glared at him. Izuku just rolled his eyes and pulled his hand back, while his old friend slammed the door open. And they were both confronted by a horde of students staring at them intently. A stare down commenced, until Mineta's voice came from behind. What are they all doing? They're scouting out the competition, retard. Bakugo said derisively, giving him a glare. Midoriya also glared at him, and the sight of both of them turning to do that at the same time made the purple-headed kid want to piss himself. They want to see the guys who survived the villain ambush, Bakugo said, curling his lip. They're checking us out before the big battle, asshole. Izuku continued. Bakugo turned to face them all. It's pointless to try, so just fuck off, ya goddamn mob. In the background, Iida could be heard yelling. Don't just call people you don't know a mob, Bakugo. I came to see what you guys are made of, true. But I didn't think you would be so arrogant. A guy with purple hair said, walking forwards. Are all the hero course students like this? He pointed at Bakugo. Not all of them, Izuku said, but I'll destroy you if you keep bothering me. Normally he would keep quiet and slouch away, but right now everyone was blocking his path. There's lots of kids who end up in general education or other departments because they failed to get into the hero course. You know that, the purple-haired guy said, undeterred. And based on the results of the sports festival, people can even come under review to be transferred to heroics. Of course, the reverse is also true. He stepped forward again, getting in Bakugo and Midoriya's faces. So, I thought, why don't I try pulling the rug out from under the heroics kids while they're on their high horses? Consider it a declaration of war. There was silence for a moment, then a boy with metal skin spoke up. Or rather, yelled up. Hey, you guys, I'm from class 1B. I heard you knocked around with villains or whatever, so I came to hear it direct. But I don't want to hear it from no snot-nosed punk. Don't embarrass the hero course during the main event, you hear? That shit doesn't matter, Bakugo said aggressively. Then he calmed down a little. None of it does, when you're at the top. After making that point, he strolled away through them, throwing glares around like candy. They all looked to the green-haired boy in front of them, curious as to what he was going to follow that up with. They soon got their answer. Do you know who you've been shouting at? Midoriya said, scowling at them. My name is Izuku Midoriya. The whole crowd immediately took a step back for health and safety reasons. This is the guy who took down hundreds of villains with eraser head and then single-handedly defeated the boss. Scary. I'm pissed off now, he said angrily. You. He pointed at the purple-haired guy. I'll accept that declaration of war, and beat your ass with it. And you. He pointed at Iron Man. Try not to embarrass the hero course yourself. But as he smirked and slouched away, he was internally panicking. Shit. I'm beginning to turn into Bakugo. Oh well. I'll just have to find a balance between nice Izuku and nasty Izuku I guess. So. While everyone spent the next two weeks training their fighting skills non-stop, Izuku was found with his mom, trying to train his mannerisms. Oh, and helping his small group of friends. Izuku smirked as he thought about that, but then he was pulled out of his thoughts by the voice of one of his classmates in their class waiting room. Midoriya, it said, and all other voices went silent. Todoroki, Izuku replied in a neutral voice. Objectively speaking, I'm not sure who has more raw power out of the two of us. The quiet boy said. Uh, that would be me. 
Izuku thought sardonically, nice try though. But you're in my way to becoming the best. So I'm going to beat you. What's this? Kaminari exclaimed. A declaration of war from one of the strongest in the class, too. Kirishima frowned. Hey, Todoroki, you can't just spring this on a guy right before we start. Not very manly. Todoroki shrugged. I'm not here to make friends, but whatever. He said solemnly, starting to turn away. But Midoriya just smirked. Well, I guess you're going down too. And then in a low voice that only Todoroki, who was right in front of him, and Jiro, with her quirk, heard, he added something. Son of Endeavor. Todoroki's eyes widened fractionally, and then he scowled. I'm going to beat you. He repeated, before walking away. Over in the corner, Bakugo scowled and growled. TCH. Stupid Deku. Within minutes, they were making their way out to the stage in the middle of the arena. It's the freshman stage, and here are the students, making their ENTRANCESSSSS. Present Mike shouted. They could hear Aizawa groan through the microphone, and Izuku smiled sympathetically. And let me guess, all you miscreants came to see these guys, right? Mike yelled. The freshly formed miracle stars that shrugged off a mass villain attack with wills of steel. The Department of Heroics freshman class. You guys want to see 1A, right? So many people, I'm beginning to get nervous. Kirishima shouted with a sharp-toothed grin as he looked around. How about you, Bakugo? The explosion in question snorted. No way I'm nervous. You're just getting stage fright, wuss. Iida looked around. The crowds here are obviously to prepare us for making pressured decisions in the real world, being watched by the public. As expected of UA, he shouted, chopping his hands. Izuku just rolled his eyes. Next came the rather less enthusiastic introduction of all the other classes, until they were all standing in the arena. Until everyone's attention was drawn by the R-rated hero, Midnight, who made half of the boys turn into blushing messes just from her costume and pose. Jiro and Mina took the chance to look at Izuku. He was standing looking at the hero rather disinterestedly. They sighed in relief, but little did they know what was going on inside their crush's head. Don't get a nosebleed, don't get a nosebleed, don't get a nosebleed. Now, let's have the player representative up here. Izuku Midoriya. Huh, and there he is, with 1,000. 400 points in the entrance exam to put him in the all-time first, and the MVP of the USJ defense, it's Izuku Midoriya. Present Mike screamed as Izuku walked up the steps. As the crowd went wild in anticipation and all the students not in 1A paled at the number of points they'd just heard, Izuku shook his head. Why, someone please give them all a distraction. Uh, were you meant to disclose that bit about the USJ? Aizawa asked, thank you so much, Aizawa sensei. You told the entire story on live nnnnnewssss. Did you forget? Oh yeah, I did, didn't I? Proceed. Fuck you, Aizawa sensei. Izuku finally reached the microphone. Uh, I wasn't told about this, so I don't have much to say. He said, and the crowd chuckled. He then added in a mumble. I hate getting too much attention. The fact that I haven't prepared as well makes me just want to go home. Nobody understood it and they all waited for him to speak. Well, nobody except one person. Tamaki Amajiki, who had been watching a little before it was time for his own year group's festival, was well versed in the language of mumbling. And as such, he understood every word, and his head snapped up in surprise and happiness. You want to go ho a kindred spirit. Meanwhile, Izuku just rubbed the back of his neck. I don't care. Everyone, just do your best against me. K. I'm sure you'll all be worthy opponents to defeat. Jiro leaned towards Shoji. That was the sharpest barbed compliment in the history of barbed compliments. She whispered, and he chuckled quietly. Tokiami had also heard, and said something about a, mad banquet of darkness. The students all booed him off angrily, and the crowd watching was mostly silent, not really knowing what to think. Suddenly, Midnight jumped straight into choosing the first round. Obstacle race. It's a race between all eleven classes. It is roughly 4 kilometers long, and you know how we always talk about the freedom we have here at UA. Well, this is it. You can do whatever you like as long as you stay on the track. She said, bouncing up and down. This caused, other things to bounce up and down, especially given her costume. Don't get a nosebleed, don't get a nosebleed. They all lined up, and Midoriya met up with his three friends at the back. I've got a plan. Shoto Todoroki looked around. No sign of Midoriya. Ah oh well, 
It looks like I'll be going all out from the start. S-T-A-R-T-T-T-T-T. Present Mike yelled, obviously having fun already. Todoroki felt the air ripple as he froze everyone behind him to the ground, but thought nothing of it. Maybe Mike's quirk disrupts the air even here. Even as he thought, he was already sprinting away, sliding on his ice. But most of his class escaped the trap and continued to race after him. Mineta came out of nowhere. You aren't getting out of here, Todoroki. Take this, grape. Halfway through his sentence, the grape head was smashed away by one of the zero pointers from the exam. Todoroki smirked, unlucky. Then, as two robots came at him, he froze them while they had only one foot on the ground. Least you could do is send something tougher my way, since my shitty old man is watching. Speaking of which, I wonder how Midoriya knew. He continued running, until he heard everyone start to run past the robots he'd frozen. At which he turned and looked back. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I froze them in a precarious position. Sure enough, as Todoroki ran off he could hear the metal monsters falling over and students shouting. Bakugo was the only one able to keep up, and the two raced ahead. Unlucky, Midoriya, Todoroki smirked. Seems you won't be beating everyone as you said. Suddenly, he skidded to a stop as he reached a massive canyon. It had ropes going across it, connecting to pillars. I'm going to have to be more careful here. He had been tuning out the commentator's voices, but he heard present Mike this time since his focus had been disrupted. The fall. Please shut up, he thought. Hearing something above him, he looked up to see Bakugo blasting ahead, just flying over it all. Shit. Bakugo looked down at him. TCH. That's what you get for declaring war on the wrong person. Where's your shitty Deku? Nowhere in fucking sight. Where am I? Completely ahead of your dumbass. He continued to fly over, until he landed on the other side, massaging his wrists a little. Flying for that long still had some drawbacks, but he'd overcome them soon. I'll have to, if I want to become number one. He muttered. He looked ahead at the obstacle in front of him. What the fuck is this one now? All he could see was a barren field, with circles in the ground everywhere. Picking up a rock, he rolled it at one of the circles, and it immediately exploded. He grimaced. I like explosions, but not when they're fucking coming at me. And seems like Katsuki Bakugo has figured it out. This obstacle's true form, the minefield straight from Rambo 3. It's set up so that if you look carefully, you can see where they are. Strain your eyes and feet, little listeners. Shut up. Bakugo groaned. Just then, Todoroki shot past him on ice, mines exploding behind him. Bakugo grimaced. He still wasn't that used to flying, but he would have to bear it. He caught up to Todoroki with the first blast, and they raced neck and neck, blasting at each other as they went. Even when a mine exploded in Todoroki's face due to Bakugo pushing him, or Todoroki blasting Bakugo with ice as the explosive boy trash-talked him, the two stayed on course, racing for first place. They both stretched their hands out, and... And here come Shoto Todoroki and Katsuki Bakugo, in fifth and sixth place respectively. Huh, both of them spun around, and then gaped at the students already there. Izuku Midoriya, Fumikage Tokiami, Kyoka Jiro and Mezo Shoji sat in a circle, silently betting on who would come next. They watched as Tokiami grudgingly handed Midoriya some money while looking at them. Deku, you bet on him beating me. Todoroki shook his head, that's what you're thinking about. How are they here? He muttered angrily, his hand frosting over in anger. The commentators waited until everyone was back in the stadium, before congratulating them all for their efforts. Now, I'm sure you're all confused, audience included, about how the first four got here so fast. We've had our cameras upgraded to follow Midoriya's speed, although I've placed a handicap on him so that he can't go faster than the cameras can follow. Everyone looked at Midoriya in surprise, and Shoji raised the green-haired boy's arm, showing the tracker on it. It beeps when he goes too fast. He explained. Izuku just ignored them all. Mike, show them. You got it, best buddy. That was surprisingly calm, for you. What can I say? I guess you're rubbing off on me. Present Mike laughed. Quote dot dot dot. I hate you. Suddenly, an image showed up on all of the big screens. Everyone watched as the four huddled together, coming up with a plan. Then, Jiro climbed on Shoji's back, facing forwards, and Tokiami did the same, facing backwards, with Shoji's arms covering them like a canopy. Like he did with Suyu and Mineta in canon. The massive boy then jumped on Midoriya's back, 
and the green-haired boy didn't even stagger. They heard present Mike yell start, and Todoroki's eyes spread across the ground. Jiro's earphone jacks shot out from between Shoji's arms and shattered the ice before it could touch Midoriya's feet, just in case. Izuku then sprinted off, passing them all in a fraction of a second. He sprinted past the robots, punching one into the distance while he was at it, and then jumped high just as he reached the fall. In real time, Izuku and Tokiami smiled at each other as they remembered a conversation they'd had a week ago. Uh, Fumikage, Izuku asked, tapping his chin as he thought of a way to help the bird-headed boy. Yeah, sorry if this is a dumb question. But, can you fly? Huh, Izuku, I do not have wings. Neither does Dark Shadow, Tokiami replied. Dark Shadow came out to prove his point and listen to the conversation. Yeah, but Dark Shadow can float. So if you are in a shadow, to make him stronger, you could technically lie on top of him, with his arms looking like wings. Izuku mused. Whoa, Tokiami and Dark Shadow said at the same time. On the screen, everyone gasped as Tokiami yelled out something as they soared through the air at inhuman speeds. Black Fallen Angel, Dark Shadow appeared from under the canopy, the darkness at his source making him bigger. His claws came out and wrapped under Midoriya, sticking out at either side like wings and allowing them to control their flight. The group swooped down at super speed, completely skipping the minefield and tumbling into the arena. They then got up, fist bumped each other, with Jiro jumping on Izuku to forcibly hug him in celebration, and sat down to chill. The whole stadium turned to stare at them in shock. What amazing teamwork, give it up for first placed Izuku Midoriya, second placed Mezo Shoji, third placed Fumikage Tokiami and fourth placed Kyoka Jiro, everyone. Present Mike yelled. Amazing teamwork indeed, well done. Aizawa said in the background, and that meant more to the four than the praise and adoration of the crowd ever could. The 42 students at the top have earned the right to progress forward. Midnight called. Sorry to the others, but better luck next time. Now, it's time for the post-preliminaries, the final selection. Even the press corps will be teeming with excitement, so from here on go all out. After hyping it up a bit more, she pointed at the screen. Behold. Human cavalry battle. As Midnight explained how it was going to work, the group of four smiled at each other. This is perfect. We can just use the same strategy. Suddenly, Midnight hit them with the news. And first placed Midoriya will be worth 10 million points. Everyone glared at him, ready to destroy the boy, but he just cracked his knuckles and smirked. I love a good incentive, but I don't particularly care anymore, so you guys can fight it out amongst yourselves. What did he mean by that? Everyone thought as they started to join up in teams. Suddenly, Midoriya was assaulted by a wall of pink hair. First place, team up with me, she yelled, pressing up against his chest. Izuku raised an eyebrow, having to try to remain unflustered as usual. You want to team up, but you don't bother learning my name. Well, it's not as if you know mine, either, she exclaimed, seeing her chance starting to slip away. I wasn't the one looking to be partners. Oh well, she shouted. Look, I've got plenty of babies that can help. Babies. He'd heard enough. What was that about? Jiro asked as he walked over to them. She glared at the pink-haired girl, not appreciating anyone else getting so close up to Izuku. Nothing much. She wanted to team up. Just then, Izuku was assaulted by some more pink. Midoriya, team up with me please. Mina pouted, looking up at him. She put her hand on his arm. I can be really useful. Jiro's eye twitched. I'm sorry, but, Izuku started. She then hugged his arm. Please, I'm begging, Midoriya. Jiro's fist clenched. Shoji suddenly stepped in before Jiro could commit premeditated murder. Mina, Izuku is trying to tell you that we are already a team. He said, gesturing to himself, the green-haired teen, and Tokiami and Jiro. Mina pouted. Ah, she released his arm and skipped away. Better find someone else. See you later, Izuku. She said singing his first name. Izuku scratched his head. What was with her? He mused. Behind him, Shoji and Tokiami pinched their nose as well, nose and beak in confusion at how clueless he was. They formed their horse, used it by now, and watched everyone else form up. They were the subject of many threatening looks, and knew that as soon as the match started, they would be the center of attention. Jiro, the furthest inside Shoji's canopy, had the headband on. Suddenly, Midnight's voice rang out. Start. Immediately, everyone in the arena raced towards them with a loud yell. 
And just as expected, Midoriya's team has been targeted first. I wonder how they will counter what amazing strength. As he had been speaking, Izuku had hurled Shoji thousands of feet in the air, until the massive boy was just a speck in the distance above them, Tokiyami using Black Fallen Angel again to keep them soaring around. Turning to face everyone else, he grinned. Shall we? He sprinted through them all, faster than they could possibly go, laughing all the way. Afterwards, they looked down at themselves. He didn't do anything, they all asked, seeing no injuries or damage. Then he lifted his arms. But I did. All of their armbands hung from his fingers as he smirked. Everyone roared in anger, and he laughed before jumping up at high speeds, landing straight in a floating dark shadow's arms and handing all of the headbands to Jiro. What's this? Midoriya has grabbed all of the headbands. Present Mike yelled. Seems that way. Hey, problem child, don't make things too unfair. Aizawa said in his usual sleepy voice. Everyone shook their heads in shock. Why does he seem used to seeing such massive power? The crowd looked at the number of points for each team. Sure enough, Jiro's team stood at the top, with 10,004,305 points, while all of the other teams stood at zero. D-E-E-K-U-U-U-U-U. Bakugo yelled, rocketing up towards them. Izuku smirked and threw a punch at him when he got close, and Bakugo went tumbling until Siro managed to drag him back with some tape. The outcome was pretty much the same when the pink-haired inventor girl's entire team tried to fly up towards them using jetpacks. All of the teams looked up at them helplessly. Fine, Shoji, here, Jiro said, handing him a bunch of headbands, making sure to keep the 10 million band and the next three valuable ones. Got it, the six-armed boy nodded. Taking a few in each hand, he threw them all out to float down. They watched as the battle immediately restarted, everyone fighting tooth and nail to get some headbands. All five of them laughed when they saw Bakugo fly up and grab two headbands, only to realize they were the two least valuable ones and scream in frustration. Their entertainment continued for a while until the battle was over. First place, Jiro's team, with Midoriya, Shoji, and Tokiami. Why am I not surprised? Present Mike yelled. Second place goes to Bakugo's team, with Mina Ishido, Hanta Siro, and Eijiro Kirishima. Third place goes to Todoroki's team, Uraraka, Yaoyorozu, and Iida. Good job, Eraserhead said, a lot more calmly. And fourth place shall go to Shinso's team, with Aoyama, Ojiro, and Shota. Well done, Shota, for being the only one from your class. The boy in question just looked around in confusion as Shinso walked away from him, Aoyama and Ojiro having similar reactions. Midoriya and his team returned to the ground at that point, stretching and ignoring the glares thrown their way. Silence reigned until they heard one word. Deku. Midoriya ignored him, and Bakugo was filled with rage. You better just hope I don't face off against you in the tournament. And that's when Midoriya turned around. I think you'll find it should be the other way around, Bakugo. He growled. Everyone immediately stepped back, regardless of whether they had been glaring at Izuku or not. At the stage, Midnight suddenly felt too dangerous young Aura's flare, and bit her lip. Um, let's take a break before the tournament. She said in a sultry voice. Now, let me find those children. She added in a mutter.